scriptures talk about a blessedness that happens to a man whose delight is in the law of God. So as someone says, it says, but his delight is in the law of God. And doth he meditate day and night. He says that that man is like a tree planted by the rivers of water, whose leaves do not wither, when he bears fruit in every season. As you are about listening to this message, we believe that your life is going to be like that man planted by the rivers of water. Your leaves are forever going to bear. And we know that your, your season will not pass by. You will forever shine and you will forever bear fruit. We have a lot of content to share with you. So we would entreat you to subscribe to this channel as well as like us. Hit that notification bell to receive more updates from us because we know that whatever content here is going to set you on calls at every time. It's going to make you attain whatever stature that Christ wants you to attain. Thank you. When you become satisfied with where you are, then you have placed a peg on your growth. That means that you are telling God, there is no need to take me higher than this. And because God gave man a will, he will honor you. Praise the Lord. There has to be a hunger. A hunger that while it is being filled, another one is created. And you continue to rise from glory to glory, from glory to glory. Let me encourage us again to continue to be very open and receptive to the word of God. No man can be helped. Listen to me. No man can be helped who hates or ignores the word of God. The moment you ignore the word of God, you have ignored the creative dimension of God. And that means nothing will ever be made in your life. Praise the Lord. It is the word that makes men. I commend you to the word of his grace that is able to build you up and then to give you an inheritance among them that are sanctified. When we gather like this week in, week out, it is always an encounter with the word of God which contains a revelation of the ways of God. Micah chapter 4. When you read from verse 2 and 3. The Bible says that. When the mountain of the Lord has been exalted. All the nations shall flow to it. They shall say come. Let us go to the mountain of the Lord. To the house of Jacob. Give us Micah chapter 4 please. He says and he will teach us his ways. We are not there just for entertainment he will teach us his ways and then when we know his ways we will walk in his paths he will teach us his ways so one of the primary tool for transforming the saints is the teaching ministry what does it mean to teach to bring to comprehension to open your mind to understand the dynamics of an operation. Not just the awareness that it exists, but how it works. The greatest blessing you can have, um, maybe second to your salvation experience, is the opportunity to belong to a spiritual family where there is an accurate communication of the ways of God. That means that if you continue to submit to the truths that you hear, you are not the one who will lift yourself. The truths were designed to lift you. When you receive them and they become life, let me tell you, it may take time, but inevitably, your life will be turned into a sign and a wonder. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. So my excitement every time we come here, it's not just because... Um, we are coming to fellowship as important as that is but that every time we come under this grace 
there will be an unfolding of a dimension let me tell you this you will be in great deception to believe that there is nothing else to learn and there is nothing else to study it's a joke compared to the dimensions we need to get to we are only a step out of the cave there are so many things that we need to learn that make for victory and then there are many things that we have known but have not become spirit and life and so there has to be a system of reiteration and emphasis right so that if you did not get it before you can get it now honestly god sees my heart that my prayer all the time is that you understand these things that i teach and you pay attention to them and watch the lifting power of light forget about darkness just focus on that light he says that was the true light that lighted every man there is a false light religion there is a false light the doctrine of men there is a false light the perspective of men that comes from their pride but there is the true light and that light can light every man not men of god the light lightens every man and he says you cannot light a candle and put it under a bushel if the candle is not lit you can hide it somewhere but the moment there is light upon that candle you cannot hide it and he will teach us his ways every week the lord continues to clear confusion from our lives and our destinies he continues to bring color to your life he continues to by his word give you a chance to life so that what i could not the privileges that i could not walk in either by reason of yesterday or by reason of my background or the limitations of my territory it is remedied when we feast upon the revelation of god's word we begin to learn his ways you are not growing if what made you afraid yesterday still makes you afraid today it means you are not growing there is no light the lord is my light and salvation of whom shall i fear hallelujah many times you will almost be pressured to doubt what you believe and doubt what you receive why because sometimes many times in fact most times it takes a while before the word of god um, would manifest physically into the results that we desire and that gap satan is a master at taking advantage of that gap to make you think that the word of god is unfruitful are we together and so you have to trust the integrity of god first that whether or not you have any physical evidence that shows that what you hold is true trust the integrity of god the word of god has been proven again and again and has been found to be faithful when you find yourself doubting the word of god it's an attack forever oh lord thy word is settled hallelujah praise god and so i came tonight to really really first encourage us i'm afraid for any believer that does not have an intentional value for the word of god that believer is not only a dangerous person to himself he is going to be dangerous to others your security in this kingdom is your understanding of the word of god your security in this kingdom your immunity in this kingdom is the fortification that knowledge provides we must continually be passionate to know and to see not just to be aware of the realities that exist in the kingdom but to see to understand the dynamics of their operation with time i can know what you have believed by the results that show let me tell you this results in the long run do not lie results may not be a good basis for gauging your progress 
in the short term why because certain things will take time to prevail but in the long run when life gives you an appreciable period of time and the requisite level of results are not produced then you do not have any excuse are we together just because jesus did not come back to life day one you would be too fast on him to feel that he was not the resurrection and the life so be patient if jesus had not resurrected after one week we'll be in trouble because or we know that something is wrong destroy this temple and i will build it in three days one week may be too long one day may be too short so somehow find consolation in the fact that even if my life is not producing certain results i will be patient 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 but then if after a long period of time my life also refuses to produce that result go back and check what could be wrong hallelujah if at all i have any fear in my life it is this i never want to hold on to something that after many years i will find out i was holding on to a lie if at all i have any fear it is this one thing to hold on to something that i think is light and then after so many years discover that i've held on to shadows rubbish and nonsense the bible says to be careful lest what you call light be darkness why because there is a way that seemeth right unto a man and the end thereof are the ways of death it's like students writing an exam everybody is boldly writing something on that paper but the lecturer is the one who is going to mark and he knows exactly what he's looking for there are few people who will come out of an exam hall and start crying and say i failed usually people will come out and with boldness and confidence some will say this is a piece of cake and so we all wait not for the students not for their pride not even for their fear we wait for the lecturer when the results are pasted sometimes you will see someone who was quiet didn't see anything you would think he was afraid and then you will come and see that that person cleared everything and then you will find a loud noisemaker shouting around making all kinds of claims and not only will his results be written there they will write see me that means your your issue yes are we together continue to vet your revelation listen there is no revelation in the body of christ today that is too big to be cross-checked no revelation i don't care from who and for how long every revelation if it is of god there should be no fear in vetting it because it should be consistent find out what you believe to know whether this is true or it's a lie don't run with lies and after many years you find out that you have wasted your time build a church on nonsense build a ministry on nonsense build your own life on nonsense it is because of this he gave unto some apostles and prophets and evangelists and pastors and teachers for the equipping not discussing equipping of the saints what does it mean to equip to bring to your life the tools needed for the work equip comes from the word equipment is that true you equip me when you supply the tools needed for the work if i'm in the farm and you bring me syringe are we together and you bring me bandage you did not equip me you brought equipment but not for the work what will i do with a syringe in a farm what will i do with a bandage in a farm so to be to be equipped does not mean to coordinate any information to me no 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 no. i must see where you are going first and then by the intelligence of the spirit to know what will be needed for this journey 
Hallelujah. When we get to the farm and they say, everybody bring out your tools. Some will bring seeds. Some will bring their hoe. And then someone will bring a hammer. He will bring a syringe. Both of them are not equipped for that good work. So the Bible says to equip the saints. So that the saints now being equipped will do the work of the ministry. It's one of the things we continue to do here. That you are equipped. By the spirit of God, he grants us access to the blueprint. What are we becoming? What is the demand that will be placed on us? And when you know it, he begins to supply the various equipments. You will need favor here. Keep it. You will need the mercy of God here. Keep it. You will need speed here. Keep it. You will need to know how to engage warfare add it here you will need to understand your identity in christ keep it here are you seeing the, the tools now yes you will need to understand men keep it here you will need to understand the realm of the spirit and how it operates keep it here when you have those things like a toolbox it says go you will continue to receive other tools but go so when you stand and there is a door the Holy Spirit who is guiding you will say, where is that hammer that I gave you before? Bring it out. He has broken the gates of brass and caught the bars of iron in some way. You get to a place and there is a door. Where is that key that I gave you? You pick it and you open that door. Are we together? Yes. When you do not excel, it is because you probably do not have the tools or you do not know how to use the tools effectively praise the lord our military people continue to write that the federal government supplies more equipment they have the know-how but the equipment the equipment the equipment we need to be equipped with the tools that will make for practical victory and for as long as you continue to remain interested, God is never weary to supply these things. Please, listen to me. Do not stop learning. Do not stop passionately pursuing the knowledge of the ways of God. This is your victory. That knowledge, that light, that understanding. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. What I want to share with us tonight is very powerful, will be very fast. And um, the Lord himself will open our eyes and grant us understanding. Teach us to pray, part one. Teach us to pray. We'll be examining a bit about the prayer ministry of the saints and the spiritual dynamics that make for effective prayer we are exploring by the spirit of god why the prayer life of many people continues to be full of activities but with very little spiritual impact and it is very very important one of the dominion systems allocated for the saints is the capacity to legislate through prayer and you will think that many disciples um, and many who submit themselves to different platforms understand prayer um, but at the end of this series you will find out that very few people truly understand prayer May God grant us understanding. Two scriptures. Psalm 65 and verse 2. Please let's hurry up media. Psalm 65 and verse 2. O thou that hearest prayer. Unto thee shall all flesh come. This is a very powerful revelation. That means not everyone can hear prayer. This man got this scripture by research 
I'm sure that he experimented praying to different deities and watched carefully for the feedback. And he noted that there was one who seemed to always have the power to answer. And he says, O thou that hearest prayer unto thee. This is my recommendation. All flesh. That means that I have arrayed a sample of various people who have the capacity to hear prayers. And out of my research, this is my conclusion. All flesh be directed to this one deity because through experience, we have seen that he sustains the ability to answer prayer. Luke chapter 11. The ministry of Jesus is one of the, the earthly ministry now. I, every time I study scripture, I like to study the gospels a lot. Um, not just because it's the interface between the old and the new, but because the gospel is primarily the earthly ministry of Jesus. And the Bible says to look up to Jesus. That means model your life and your convictions after that pattern. When Jesus walked upon the earth, notice that Jesus had extensive times of mentorship and the teaching of those who would later become his apostles. Are we together? And the disciples continued to observe Jesus. They saw the kind of results that he got. And they noticed that every time before the results would come, he would communicate with the Father in a certain way before performing whatever he would have to do. They continued to note that progression. That Jesus did not just blindly do things. Sometimes he would retreat and tell them he was communicating with heaven. And then he would return and they would see the results. So the disciples continued to take note of that remember that they were walking with jesus and they really wanted to be like him so they were studying everything that he was doing and in luke chapter 11 when this was after the lecture that happened in the house of mary and martha remember martha was running around this is luke's gospel now Martha was running around and Mary was sitting and you know, he said, Martha, Martha, you are worried and upset about many things. This is one thing is needful to sit at the feet of the master. So after all of that, um, we go to verse 11 and the Bible says, Jesus now is beginning to teach on prayer. So Jesus taught on prayer. Pay attention to anything Jesus taught on because that meant that it was, it, it had a, a major role in the believer's work and in birthing victory jesus luke chapter 11 and verse 1 are we there 11 verse 1 media not 11 11 verse 1 and it came to pass that as he was praying in a certain place so what was he doing in a certain place so we see that he was praying and we see that there was a location the Bible says when he sees, that means when he finished, brought it to an end, one of his disciples said to him, Lord, teach us to pray. That means men can be taught to pray. Prayer as a ministry must be taught to be effective. Now, many believers do not know that it is the teaching on prayer that makes prayer effective, not praying. The understanding that sponsors your, your action is where the victory is. Our, our, our world today is full of people who believe that the only way to pray is just to talk and begin to shout. And you will soon learn in this series that many people continue to shadow box. There is no accuracy. The disciple did not say we cannot pray. No. The problem here was not prayerlessness. I hope you understand what you are saying. The Bible says, the Bible did not say the disciples later came. Uh -uh, they were there. Listen, he finished praying and one of his disciples said to him, he was within range. So we are not discussing prayerlessness here. This is not a backsliding person saying, Lord, restore my prayer life. This is not an issue of restoration. This is an issue of praying amiss. 
there is no result and he's saying lord we give up we've been trying to copy you but it's very clear we are not getting something so teach us to pray so prayer should be taught not just conducted okay everybody oh yeah open your mouth and pray. prayer should be taught if all we continue to do is to say pray 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 everybody pray very soon we'll be tired like many believers are prayer meetings in many churches have the least um, uh, attendance do you know why it's a testimony it's a report card it's a track record thank god that's not the case with this ministry do you know why because prayer works when prayer works people will prove to you by their commitment many churches and many assemblies today are frustrated prayer meetings are in, in, in respectfully speaking some of the most boring and pointless and people come and you know they don't expect an answer and while they are praying different people are just conjuring versions of ways that they they come up with to try to communicate some are not serious some are even typing because they, they feel it's more profitable. They are aware that it will not be answered. So the disciples said, teach us to pray. Someone said, teach us to pray. I thought Jesus would turn and say, no, you don't teach prayer. Pray, my friend. Jesus is about to answer that prayer now. Teach us to pray. Please go back, verse 1. Let's finish it up. Verse 1. As John taught his disciples... Are you seeing that John was a very, very, very good mentor? John taught the disciples. The disciples of John were not just great people for nothing. John did not just pray in the wilderness. You produce prayer warriors, not just by praying, by the accurate teaching of the prayer ministry. In many churches, they just say if you want to join prayer band that means if you have passion for prayer now understand this i'm not trying to be sarcastic uh, if you want to join prayer band and then you know everybody who believes that he has some kind of zeal for spiritual things they now join the prayer band and say we're now going to pray and everybody's waiting for the prayer point we are going to ask the lord to move in a way and a manner that even me i don't even know just open your mouth and pray and you know everybody is just praying and 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 honestly Listen, I know people are dissipating energy and I don't mean to be sarcastic. But stand from God's standpoint and you are watching people praying. And you see someone praying and just say, just tell everybody, stop, stop where you are. What were you doing? And what do you mean what I was? They asked us to pray. I know, but what did you expect? What were you saying? You will be amazed to know how many people who did not have any idea of what they were doing. It was just an honor to a ritual, an energetic ritual. Are we together? Verse 2. And he said unto them, Jesus now, I love Jesus. Ah, I love Jesus. I really love Jesus. The way he mentors is powerful. The confidence. Teach us to pray. Of course you don't know how to pray. Sit down. Let me teach you. And Jesus is teaching now. When ye pray. So they were already praying. So he is not restoring their prayer life. He is rearranging the pattern to make sure it works. Are you following me this night? Jesus did not say you guys don't even pray. Mm -mm. He said I know what you are asking for. You have been praying and praying and this thing is not working and now you are saying teach us to pray even as john taught the people so jesus is now saying when ye pray say say this should be the content of your prayer you want to understand this properly you have to go to matthew's account um we'll delve here i, I brought you here to see the teachers to pray let's go to matthew's account chapter six um and then we'll see what Jesus Christ, Matthew chapter 6, go to verse 4. All right, 5 now. And when thou prayest, so we're continuing now, another person's account. 
Thou shalt not be as the hypocrites. What is the relationship between prayer and hypocrisy? Jesus is talking about prayer and he's now talking about hypocrisy. That when you pray, you can pray like hypocrites. So how do hypocrites behave? They love to pray standing in the synagogues and in the corners of the streets that they may be seen, not that the prayer should be answered. So the hypocrisy there is the motif behind that. That is possible a man can be praying and what you are doing in the spirit is hypocrisy. You are more concerned about the testament of those seeing you than you are about the, the contact you make and the answer it produces. The Bible says whoever assumes that state is a hypocrite. Are we together now? They love to do it. So hypocrites love to pray. But the Bible says that the, the motive behind their prayer is to receive some kind of self-respect from men. They are not interested in the prayer being answered. They are just concerned about having a testimony before men that my prayer life is not down. And believe me, there are so many people who are victims of this. They are more concerned about your hearing them pray. They are more concerned about the respect and the honor that you give them by reason of your witnessing their prayer life. They are not concerned about the efficiency of the prayer. Their real reward and their real attraction is not answer, it's not fellowship. It is the fact that they want men to know and to attest to the fact that you are prayerful. Hallelujah. Verily I say unto you, they have their reward. What is their reward? The applauds that they get from men. So when you see me pray all the time, for instance, if somebody says, does Joshua Selman pray? He says, ah, the other day. You know that voice we're hearing is about as if it was a, a tractor that was cutting. That, that was him. That is my reward. What is the reward? The respect that I receive. Whether perceived or real, you have gotten your reward. Next verse. But when, but thou. That means since you taught me, you want to use my own formula now. It says you, when you pray, enter into your closet. Now, the idea is not secrecy. Please understand what Jesus is saying here. I will explain to you. It looks like he's just talking secrecy. Because he said your father who sees you in secret. But I will explain something very powerful. It says enter into thy closet. The idea is not hiding from people. The idea is the purity of your motif. That your focus should not be centered on just the visualizations of men in your prayer. But that your father who sees what is the purpose of this secrecy so that you will not be seen. To purify the sincerity of that activity. So it is not so much about hiding away from people than it is the purity of the motif, the intent that is back of your prayer. Do you get the idea now? So that you don't think that Jesus is just saying, just go and hide somewhere. How do you now pray as a prayer band? How do you now pray as a church? The idea is not just secrecy. The spirit and the intent of what Jesus was saying here was that the secret place helps you because there there's no point to prove there's no human there now to be able to corrupt the purity of your desire so in that similitude so the secret place is not really just a place it is a mindset it is an understanding you can carry the secret place to a public place of prayer and that while you are praying your concern is not really the accreditation of men but the purity of that fellowship are we following tonight Teach us to pray and when thou has shut the door pray to your father in secret and your father who is in secret will reward you openly you now understand what i what i explained here next verse verse seven but when you pray now watch this use not vain repetitions as the heathen do now hold on jesus is not saying don't repeat prayer He's saying there is a way the hidden do. You have to study this contextually. In ancient times, there was a way that the hidden prayed. They prayed doing a lot of enchantments to idols. Are you getting what I'm saying now? 
Jesus is not saying repetition in prayer is wrong. Uh -uh. He's qualifying what he's saying. He's saying there is a repetition that is in the similitude of how the hidden operate. Because in those days, those who prayed to idols and the rest, they used magic books. And they used all kinds of books that had um, activities of sorcery and all of that. So the, they did not understand what they were saying. The miracle was not in the understanding. The miracle was in the ritual of the enchantment. There are many cultures that still do it today. There are many um, occultic groups today that still do it. I watched a video where um, a place in Asia, I would not mention the name. I watched a video, not that they told me. Someone had... I think it was it was cancer cancer of something you could see the swelling i mean they were showing it the, the visuals was there and these guys are doctors but they are also healers they have their lab coat but they also you know they they have the way of using energy and all of the rest to heal i watched it's not like they told me the person to go through the surgery was lying down there and they did not perform any surgery in terms of any um, opening of the body and all of that they started chanting something they were chanting it and they started chanting it fast you know repeating it for a very long time until they themselves were almost possessed by it and while they were talking right in the the uh, um, video you would see the cancer just melting going down like that it was over and they all clapped for themselves hugged themselves jesus is saying there is a way the hidden when they are praying to an idol, an idol does not need your understanding. Your idol just needs your motion and your alliance or allegiance to a ritual. Are you getting the point now? The hidden do not expect their God to speak. They don't expect all of those things. So they chant a lot of things. And he's saying when you pray, I have noticed that you have borrowed a prayer life from other hedonistic nations so when you pray to god you don't pray like you are praying to someone alive and you are victims of enchantments that are akin to magic books are we together now you notice in the book of acts one of the exploits of the apostles there were books that were brought out they were burned. some of those books were used for prayer till today they still use it there are many pseudo christian sects and there are many other occultic groups that make use of certain books where there are enchantments they can tell you chant this 90 times chant this five times chant this and the person is just doing it so i'm, I'm trying to balance this because many people have erroneously said this to mean that um the bible jesus was teaching here that don't repeat any prayer that means if you say lord i bless you that's all right if you repeat it again or father grant me this and you say it again it is unbelief that's not what the bible is saying jesus himself if that is the thought he broke the rule because when jesus was in gethsemane he prayed using the same word three times so he certainly was not teaching here about vain repetition are you getting this now remember god is teaching us how to pray so he's giving us the rules of engagement to understand the boundaries of effective prayer do not use vain repetition in the similitude of the hidden are we together and there is a reason why he says that oh dear Matthew, let me turn there quickly so that we make progress. Is God already helping someone? When thou prayest, use not vain repetition. So notice what Jesus is saying now. Jesus has spoken about three things. Teach us to pray. And Jesus says, sit down. When you pray, number one, do not be like the hypocrites. That's the first thing he's addressing. In teaching you to pray, and then he describes his concept of hypocrisy. Are we together now? We have to observe the things that Jesus said to observe. Because in, in Matthew 28, he said, teaching them to observe everything that I have shown you. Teach them. Pay attention. All the things I stress, stress it when you are teaching them. All the things that were minus, let it remain minus as you are teaching them. Teaching them to observe. Don't just bypass these things and go to our Father who art in heaven. That's a hedonistic 
once you don't have the revelation that prayer becomes a powerless ritual are we together yes don't jump the steps number one the first blockage he says is the propensity to be a hypocrite and what is the hypocrisy that your motif has not yet been purified your you are more concerned about the weakness of men the accreditation that men have and it's true because you see in the world that we live in it's a wonderful thing to have a good report a good report before men is a noble thing however with respect to your dealings with god sometimes it is better to not have a good report before men and then have a good report before god but because of the way our civilization has been so programmed um it looks more profitable to have a good report before men so jesus is saying that is the first thing you have to correct the first challenge to prayer life is not attack he has not mentioned a demon here he has not even mentioned Satan here. Can you imagine that? He's already showing you the things that can waste your time. That when you pray under this condition, you were not praying. So as I approach effective prayer, the first revelation is to be able to ward off the propensity for hypocrisy by ensuring that whether or not people look at me, I trust by the help of the Holy Spirit we'll learn that in in the latter part of the series by the help of the spirit to be able to look past the deception oh i'm praying now and wow someone will be there and say wow look at this guy i mean just look at the way this guy is praying this is two hours and he's, he's still going he's saying be careful while that is commendable because it can inspire that person to rise you can be a victim of your own action because a time will come when you will reduce yourself from the real contact with his presence to you are just you want people to see the scribes and the pharisees that's the first thing we are correcting the desire to be seen and to be accredited as a prayerful person for the sake of personal applause of men the bible says you have your reward there then the second thing that god is dealing with now is the to enter your closet you see the idea is still buttressing on that point i told you that the idea is not just to be enclosed in a place although listen although to be honest with you if all of your prayer is public you don't know much about prayer are we together because the real encounters that will happen to you literally will happen in the secret when you are alone with God everybody say alone with God yes. when it has to do with prayer ministry there are dimensions of prayer where it is not husband and wife it is not father and children it is not pastor and members are we still together it is not colleagues it is not even prayer group members or church members or department members there are dimensions in prayer like jacob where you have to be alone there are certain things god cannot come in to reveal when you are corporate you have to be alone but whether you are alone or you are outside you must carry the idea of a secret life that means that when we are praying here as a congregation we lift up our voices and we begin to pray in your mind you must be able to pray with the assumption that you are alone with god not just that we are corporately together because there is a level of self-consciousness that will rob you from receiving from god are we together there are people for instance the awareness that someone is looking at them you just remember that ah Maybe this person likes me or let me not waste my chance now while I'm praying. You see, that this is what Jesus is trying to stop. When you assume you are in the closet, you are not concerned whether your trouser is going down or whether your shoe is coming out. That the focus is that I am communicating with the God of all flesh to him that answers prayer. This simple reason is why many people have not received the baptism of the holy spirit because they carry their beauty into the experience 
they carry their masculinity into the experience. How do I now start praying in tongues? Ba, 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 ba. I, I, I schooled in UK. And uh, now when I start doing this, will I look fine? Will I not look fine? Uh, am I going to disgrace my countenance? Jesus said, if you don't carry that mindset of secrecy while you pray, you will be too self-conscious to make spiritual contact. And then the third thing he's addressing is vain repetition in the similitude of the hidden. Now look at this. The Bible is not a magic book. The name of Jesus is not a magic um, a, a journey. You see that? There is power in the name because of the person whose name it is. Not because of the name itself. There is an owner to that name and that owner is alive. BMW is not a car. BMW is a company. They produce cars. So that signature there, you can trace a real person who is the owner of that company. Jesus is not just an enchanted name that has power in it. No, at the back of that name is a real person. Are we together now? And if you just focus on the name as a magic ritual and do not focus on the person, you are behaving like the hidden this is why let me listen to me i'm teaching you this it is why for many years i i shared with you my experience in jesus name in jesus name and these wicked demons did not leave me because the revelation of the person behind the name i wasn't really interested i just know that in jesus name ask the sons of skiva huh ask the sons of skiva we adjure you by Jesus whom Paul preaches. And the demon said, nonsense. That's not how it works. Jesus we know. Paul we know. Who are you? And the demon pounced on them, the Bible says. Stripped them naked and beat them and drove them out. Imagine a prayer team going into a room to minister to someone. All right, let's go. A delegation and they enter and you hear silence for a long time and you are wondering you are seeing lots of things going on motion and you think my god you can imagine what the devil is going through and the next thing you see a door open forcefully and you see adults running naked all beaten by one person do you know what reproach that testimony is to the name of the lord let me tell you, if it happened in the days of the, of the sons of Sceva, it can still happen today. Because those demons have not left it. They are around. What if the demons that beat that guy are the ones oppressing your family? <laughs> Use not vain repetitions as the heathen do for they think so he's talking mindset here the vain repetition is a mindset issue for they think that they shall be heard not for the power and the potency but for their much speaking their mindset is pegged at the volume of the speech and not the power that is back of what they are saying not the truthfulness of the communication but the volume So he's addressing hypocrisy. He's addressing um, that, that life that makes you self-conscious, that you are not able to focus. And then number three, he's addressing the issue of vain repetition, that the power in prayer is not in the enchantments. The power in prayer is in, well, let me not go ahead of myself. Eight. Be not ye therefore like them. Why? This is the revelation that exempts you from that kind of life. For your heavenly father knoweth what, ye, what things ye have need of before you ask him. Wait, keep this scripture. It's a very dangerous scripture. That means your heavenly father is aware. So why will he allow you to still pray? Don't just jump this talk. If my heavenly father knows that I need rent, Oh God, why frustrate me to pray before you send rent? Why frustrate me to do these things? Are you seeing that now? Your heavenly father knows what you have need of before you ask him. Um, 
this can mean many things number one this can mean that prayer then is not limited to petitions alone your heavenly father knows the needs you have but he's more interested in fellowship so he will still allow you to come are we together he can grant you the answer without you coming but that will rob him an opportunity for fellowship so he will allow you to come in prayer so that prayer will do many things it automatically tells you that the purpose of prayer is not just a system for needs to be met your heavenly father knows that you have this need before you ask him but number two it also validates the pattern of god what is the pattern of god the pattern of god is that he gave man dominion are we together now and he gave man a will and the moment God gave man a will, it became scripturally incorrect for God to veto the will of man and supply anything. Mm -mm. Even at the expense of your eternal salvation, he allows you to choose him. At the expense of your eternal doom, he will still not force salvation on you. Are we together now? Yes. Nine. After this manner, the mentor Jesus he didn't say pray like this no he would have brought a lot of error he said after this manner what is manner the pattern are we together now it is not copying the recitation but that in this thing we call the Lord's Prayer like a ladder there is a pattern discerned by the spirit the pattern and use it in your prayer and it will make your prayer as effective as my own he did not say copy the words our father our father who art in heaven who art in heaven no that's not what jesus was saying of course i believe there's an advantage just quoting it like that the way it is but the idea was not for you to recite you will become like the hypocrite again he's saying after this manner so let's study it now that means in this this description is a hidden code are we together a code of operation that reveals the sequence of effective prayer are you ready <sighs> let me pause there a bit and just share a few things as a background I wrote a few things here that I don't want us to miss. Number one, I wrote here that prayer is part of the priestly ministry of all saints, all believers. Prayer is part of the priestly ministry. Please, if you're writing, you may want to write it down. That prayer is part of the priestly ministry. So when the Bible says we have been made unto our God, Revelations 5 and verse 10, uh, kings and priests, there is the priesthood ministry of the church. And that part of the priesthood ministry of the church is to offer that incense of prayer. So all believers are called to pray. There might be individual people who by reason of their call and the election, um, have been graced to function in certain dimensions of the prayer ministry. However, all believers are called and mandated as a priestly ministry to pray. Matthew chapter 21 and verse 13. Jesus himself, after flogging people from the temple, remember when Jesus made a whip and flogged all the people, when he drove all of them out and turned the exchangers and turned everything, released all the doves and the cattle to go away, he said, my house shall be called the house of prayer. So God wants his house to be called the house of prayer. The house where there is access to commune with the father my house shall be a place where communication with heaven should not be difficult are we together now a house of prayer but you have made it a den of thieves or robbers so god himself wants his house to be called the house of prayer why pray 
write it down i want to give you six reasons i think i we have to do this before we go into the dynamics of the patterns of prayer even if we can't finish it today we'll take it off next week it's important for us to understand why do we have to pray number one in this kingdom we pray first because it is a command believers are commanded to pray there's a little bible study now luke chapter 18 and verse 1 please write it down and then first thessalonians chapter 5 verse 17 remember we are taught to pray so there is we are, we are receiving the teaching now so that our prayer will be effective prayer is a command for believers luke 18 and verse 1 and he speak a parable unto them unto this end that men not some men men once you are a man you are mandated in this kingdom to pray he speak a parable that men ought always to pray and not to faint first thessalonians chapter 5 and verse 17 he says pray without season that does not mean pray from morning till night you will live an ineffective life it means be consistent in your prayer life pray without season pray without season don't go on break and resume after five months are we together be consistent be consistent in your prayer life the second reason why we need to pray is that it is one of the strategies for fellowship with the father it is not the only platform but it is one of the fellowship the, the platforms many people think that prayer is the only way to fellowship with the father no no but it is one of the major strategies for fellowship. First Corinthians chapter 14, verse 2. Paul is teaching here, and he's teaching the church in Corinth about prayer. And he said, please give it to us, First Corinthians chapter 14. And now he's saying it, of course, with respect to praying in tongues. But he said, for he that speaketh in an unknown tongue, look up, please, speaketh not unto men, not unto men, not unto men, this is not the gift of, of tongues. Are we together? Like a, a ministry, one of the nine gifts. No. He's saying, He speaketh not unto men, but unto God. For no man understandeth it. How be it in the spirit, He speaketh mysteries. So it's very important. It is one of the strategies for fellowship, for communion. It was Paul that was, was praying and he said the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ. Remember? He said the love of God and then he said the communion. That's where we get the word koinonia from. The communion of the Holy Spirit be with you always. Be with you always. The communion, it means the sharing together. It means intimacy. It means intercourse. It means the participation of the Spirit. The oneness that comes through fellowship, he's praying that it remains with the saints. Why? Because it is only with God that all things are possible. And so whatever makes you to lose your connection and to rob you of an opportunity for intimacy has also destroyed your potential for efficiency. It is one of the strategies for fellowship. Number three, why do we pray? Please never forget this. God is making our prayer lives fruitful. Why do we pray? Number three, it is a platform for growth and transformation. The growth process of the believer was so designed that prayer will play a major part in your growth. That means believers that don't pray cannot grow effectively. In fact, cannot even grow. It is a platform for growth and transformation. Three scriptures. Luke chapter 9, please give it to us. Luke chapter 9 from verse 28 to 29. Luke chapter 9 from verse 28 to 29. And it came to pass about an eight days after these sayings, he took Peter and John and James and went up the mountain 
to do what not to rest to pray next verse and as he prayed what happened the fashion of his countenance was altered and his raiment became white and glistering that glory and that transformation came as a result of prayer so when you pray it is a system allocated for your growth and for your transformation first corinthians chapter 14 and verse 4 that's the second verse you will write under that point first corinthians 14 and verse 4 after that we'll go to the book of jude he that speaketh in an unknown tongue edified himself the word edified there is is an architectural term it means that he builds up he builds up himself are we together that means that you build up yourself akin to an exercise imagine someone who is working out every day and just making sure that he's fit and healthy this is what he's saying that he that prays in an unknown tongue he that prays now edifies himself so it's a system for growth jude jude has only one chapter and we'll read verse 20. it says but ye beloved if you are not beloved that scripture is not for you but but ye beloved building up yourselves building up yourselves building up yourselves on your most holy faith by praying by praying you build up yourself on your most holy faith what does this mean that you are growing and increasing in discernment you are growing and in your your faculties of interacting with the realm of the spirit are being heightened and fine-tuned in the place of prayer one of the classic signs of prayerlessness is lack of discernment you know immediately that a man's prayer life is dead when your discernment is dead what is discernment the faculty of perception the faculty of spiritual perception the ability to be able to perceive the impulses of the realm of the spirit to perceive danger to perceive joy to perceive the activity of angels are we together now all of these things remember look up please i've taught you here that man can i use you please come doctor come um, jakes stand here watch this man is spirit everybody says spirit that man lives in a body man is not spirit like a separate entity soul like a separate entity then body like a separate entity that teaching is not very accurate are we together man is a spirit primarily that means his sphere of reality is the realm of the spirit this spirit cannot interact with the earth realm because based on the law of territory it must have a material body that is consistent with that ecosystem to be able to work are we together now so this spirit if it finds its way to the earth it will move the same way demons are moving and so god made this spirit a legal occupant in the earth by giving it a material body are we together but there, there was a challenge and god needed to solve it why because the earth realm and the realm of the spirit they are all part of god's kingdom but the dimensional nature of their operation makes it impossible for spirit to operate and body to come there you cannot switch them so there is a there is an issue now the spirit cannot relate with the body because there is a disparity in the realms and so God decided to create a bridge. The faculty that connects the spirit and the body, he called it a mind. Are we together now? That that mind consists of will, emotions, and intellect. Those faculties were put as the bridge that the spirit will use to interact with the body. And the bridge that the body will use to execute the impulses of the spirit now watch this when you call man a soul what you mean is the spirit in partnership with this faculty of consciousness that's what is called a soul are we together now if a man dies you don't see three people coming out or two people in the air going to either heaven or hell and then you see a body lying down there no there is no record of that in scripture Jesus gave up a ghost, not many ghosts. Only one spirit left that body and only one spirit returned. 
Are, you, are, are we together now? Yes. The realm of the spirit, watch this, controls the physical realm. The Bible tells us that. That the things that appear, paraphrasing, came from the things which do not appear. Remember, I never said the things that are not real. They just are unreal from this dimension. That means that man being spirit and dwelling in a body has an advantage of the duality of realms are we together now that dual nature is what makes the body to receive impulses that it cannot explain so when you stand and suddenly there is a heaviness in your heart you don't even know why there's no joy again it's as if the spirit man is perceiving something from the realm of the spirit and then because it is connected through the mind to the body is trying to transmute that but because please help this lady but because your prayer life is down look up please the 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 fortitude to receive that perception so that the body can execute what the spirit is saying is not there i'll give you an instance the spirit of death can be roaming around a family are we together and now because in the realm of the spirit there are no secrets i hope you know um there are secrets but what i mean is that nothing is hidden really there are secrets even in the spirit but nothing is hidden are we together now watch this when the spirit of death is roaming around your spirit is perceiving it your spirit knows the spirit of death knows if you came out of your body in the realm of the spirit, you will no longer be in a vision. Ah, death, what are you doing here? Say, ah, I've been here. Is it that I'm, I'm not just coming? I've been there. But because the body was unfruitful, excuse me, are we together? The body was unfruitful. So when you begin to pray, what happens is that there is a rearranging. Because the way the flesh works, it, it attempts to subjugate the spirit to a point where it cannot gain that ascendance. This is where the advantage of things like fasting and so on and so forth can come in. Are we together now? All of this we are going to discuss. But generally this man, the spirit of death is loitering around his vicinity and he's moving around because he's deadened in the flesh. His organs of perceiving. Imagine in the physical that you cannot hear. Hello? You cannot um, smell. You cannot see. You cannot sense. Are you alive? Are we together now? Yes. You are not alive. Because I can be killing you and you are not aware. The only thing you will just know that you are fainting. And then you go into coma and die. Because the ability is not there. I can be talking to you. Supplying an information you cannot hear. The same way there are physical senses. There are also spiritual senses. And that these spiritual senses. The same way you have blindness. You can have spiritual blindness. Deafness. You can have spiritual deafness. Are we together? Yes. The same way your body. I don't know the name of what the sickness is. Where people don't feel when you touch them. You can have that same thing too in the realm of the spirit. So even if the Holy Spirit is saying, Mr. Man, you are, not, you are not there at all. And the Bible says, I'm explaining to you that when you begin to pray, what is happening is that there is a fine-tuning. The spirit, your spirit man, begins to gain ascendance. And you can stand and just sense and know. And because your organs of interaction with the realm of the spirit is heightened, you, it, the Holy Spirit is at liberty based on the strength of your spirit man to use whatever faculty he pleases to reveal to you what to do so he can use your hearing and you hear he can use your seeing you will see a vision he can use the knowing in your heart and you come with perception he can even move you into his will the more you pray you are giving the holy spirit the versatility of options to be able to communicate the will of god to you are you getting what this scripture is saying now that means that people who don't pray imagine that this guy is blind spiritually deaf on one ear spiritually are we together cannot sense anything look at the little allowance the holy ghost has to communicate destiny things to him so you can have a dream but because you are spiritually blind you will see nonsense 
you will get up from that dream and write things that was not really what was revealed why because the problem is blindness remember paul was blind but he was still seeing he was had he was in a vision he said when you understand this prayer is no longer about give me tea give me bread you are saying holy spirit you are at the mercy of my faculties of interaction your your possibilities are limited by the space i give you could it be that if you were prayerful and you became sensitive you would have been able not just something dangerous you would have been able to know let me tell you this when you become very sensitive the holy spirit depending on the gravity of what he's communicating he can use multiple channels to strengthen your conviction very powerful what i'm sharing with you we pray because it is a platform for growth and transformation i will never forget how koinonia started we were already you know doing ministry and doing a lot of things but i just knew that for some reason a season was about to come to a close and another season would start everybody say perception that's right that's what happens and it's not enough to perceive you can perceive and what you perceive is unfruitful to you because you don't know what it is and you don't know what to do about it are we together and i remember that time i just got up one morning happy blessing the lord for the day and suddenly the lord just summoned me go for a retreat immediately i just packed my things people you are not seeing me again the lord is calling me now what if i got there and god said i don't know why you are here who asked me see i pray for you sincerely may god have many options on how to communicate his intents to you may look at me i'm going to be ah, i wish oh dear holy spirit grant us grace let's see what we can do i will be showing you from this teaching that if you are blind spiritually and suddenly without growth and renewal satan can give you an aberration of vision and show you something see a faculty that god is not used to leading you with he will never use it on sensitive matters of your life this is one way you know you are under attack already let me give you an example ah. watch this do you know that i will be showing you as we continue that every believer based on your personalized work with god god has studied you and for every season there is a primary channel of spiritual communication the most accurate that god has found based on your renewal when you change seasons and you grow he will readjust too so there are people who god has found out that based on his work with them dreams are the most powerful way of releasing the fullness of his will and then they believe in it because it's one thing for god to release an impulse through a channel but if your reception is wrong you will corrupt the purposes of god it's hard work what the holy ghost does in men so he has to keep trying that's why there are many times it's like you had something but you are not clear god is testing those faculties and seeing your response are we together now ah, it's as if i had something and you are not serious about it and god said hey, no if we walk with these guys hearing something is going to be wrong let's go back to the dream and it's better to fight the warfare there and fine tune the dream are you now seeing why a dream was used for joseph Now watch this, many believers have not been used to God speaking in a certain way and then when it now comes to major decisions in their lives, the devil will now use a method, uh -uh. the way you kill the bear, the way you kill the lion is how you will also kill Goliath. When Saul gave him another arsenal. David said, I'm not used to this. I was not trained with this. 
how you were trained is how you will fight the battle so when god trains you listen please this series is very powerful listen god trains you and finds out that the way you are the environment you came from the unbelief there is too great the strongest point until you marry and leave that environment a dream remains the most valid way of his communicating your hearing will always be in error because the environment cannot allow you to grow that way god will limit himself to that thing you will find out that 90 percent of your hearing will be nonsense so when we have a responsibility as believers to study the various channels of spiritual communication versus our believing them and the results over time if you study this you can know that when god says release your best arsenal to hear me you know what to release there are people this their ears is like a magnet there is if god speaks even if god speaks from Kwangila, they will hear they have sharpened their ears but if god shows them anything they, are, they will not see so God will limit his walking to their ears. There are others. Look at prophets in the Bible. There were others who were seers. There were others who were not just hearing alone. Please help them, those under the anointing. They were not just hearing. Listen, look up please. And they were not just seeing. But these were people who God will make them act what he wants to do. Physical acting so that they cannot doubt it. A prophet was asked to lie down on one side of the bed for one year. A prophet was made to marry a prostitute called Goma to act out the harlotry of the nation of Israel. You cannot doubt that one now. Ah. By wisdom, O oh God, heaven's gates open up. With understanding, you order the sea. Creating day and night, turning darkness into light, arranging the stars to your need. Blessed are you, O Lord, our God, eternity's holy King. Blessed are you, O Lord, our Listen, part of what prayer does to you, we've not started dealing with the patterns of prayer. We're just examining why we should pray. You have to, the way God will tell you, wear this shirt today. He cannot use the same thing to say relocate to the US. The gravity of, if, if I don't wear the shirt that God wants me to wear today, the consequence will not be as grave as God saying my destiny is in the US and I'm in Nigeria so he will not use the same channel he needs to use the channel that sends the strongest signal so you can receive look at this one of the hardest things for the saints is to know when seasons end let me tell you the proof of real stamina in prayer and in the spirit is the ability to discern when seasons end is a very difficult thing that's why many ministries cannot grow because to know when you need to shift to know when you need to relocate to know when you need to start the TV ministry your spiritual maturity is not tested in word of knowledge and prophecy the ability to know that you have gotten to a crossroad in the spirit I tell you you can start another journey for 10 years you can be accurate in life and in ministry and you just veer off that's how you see someone who say I'm a prophet today tomorrow and then he's confused our channels listen this this duality of realms is where the confusion is because the way the realm of the spirit works sit down for a few minutes we're going to pray the way the realm of the spirit works listen to me and the way the physical realm works is not correct or, or it, it does not work at the same um, frequency watch this there are times if your spirit is healthy 
and is in partnership with the Holy Spirit. There are times that Satan, who is the master of the flesh realm, will create emergency in the earth realm. But when you check in the realm of the spirit, your spirit man is at peace. And he said, forget it. Nothing is really going on. If you don't know this, you will panic over everything. So when your spirit is strong, even when there are all kinds of things, you cross-check. Once the spirit is not betting anything, no matter what is happening here, you ignore it. This is why many people are stable. Satan knows that this, this faculty that connects you has a serious issue there. So he will play with water in the physical realm. And all of a sudden, when that is happening, you are just seeing everything shaking. Hey, and then the spirit of fear is trying to manipulate you. But when your spirit is strong, you know how to cross check. When there is an emergency in the realm of the spirit, sometimes there can be absolute peace in the earth realm. And so you find out that God is telling you, start running. And you say, God, but there is peace here. He's saying, run, run. There is trouble. And in, suddenly, the cloud of darkness just comes to cover people. See, I tell you why many people do not pray. It is not your fault. It is the ritual. This is what I'm trying to correct. I have watched this for many years. Many believers pray and they do not achieve much in prayer because they do not understand the scope, the boundaries, nor the importance of effective prayer. There are people today who have gone to the grave simply because they did not strengthen the capacity to function in these dual dimensions. That which is spiritual, that which is spirit, is of the spirit is spirit, and that which is of the earth is earthy. Way before your boss starts to threaten you, the realm of the spirit has picked the signal. Why? Because it's already seen the formation of evil spirits. It is the manifestation of the patterns that kept your father down. And six months before your boss starts acting out, the Holy Ghost is already sending the signal. But because you, you had the dream, but you didn't understand what it... Ah, I know that I wrote an exam, but I did not finish the exam. What did it mean? You don't know, and because your faculty of interaction is not there, you just sit down. It's not about an exam. These are ways, they are speakings of the Spirit. Let me tell you this. One of the hardest assignments of the Holy Spirit is to transfer the will of God from the heart of the Father to the mind of the saints. It is difficult. That's why when God finds one man who is aligned, you better stay out of the life and the way of that man. He will clear you for, because he knows how hard it is. Jesus, Jesus, your Jesus is looking at the disciples and they are wondering why he's looking at them and he's seeing Satan looking for a particular disciple to enter. Jesus is asking them a question. Who do men say that I am? And they are all laughing. No discernment. And yet Satan just came quietly and hijacked Peter's faculty and Jesus is still watching. And the Peter himself is happy. Oh, you will not go to the cross. And Jesus looks and says, get deep behind me, Satan. And Peter looks at me, Satan. He said, Peter, let me tell you the drama that has been happening that you are not even aware of. All the while I was looking at you, something was happening in the realm of the spirit. Satan continued to desire to sift you like wheat. He says, it is my prayer that saved you. I have prayed for you. That you faint not, he said, and when thou art converted, strengthen your brethren. There are many believers that pray, but they are not transformed because they don't know what happens. You have ears in the spirit, you have eyes in the spirit, you have faculties of interaction. The only thing is that, now, respectfully speaking, people like Kenneth E. Hagin taught of course knowledge revelation is progressive 
our fathers like Kenneth E. Hagin taught that we have five spiritual senses just like we have five physical senses well that may be true as at the time the revelation came but there are no five it's not five spiritual senses we have there are many spiritual senses that that um do not easily have physical expressions that's why all of them will be grouped and will just manifest as the same thing you would think you are having the same experience when i was praying yesterday my hands were hot when i was praying today my hands were hot your body interpreted it as heat but they were two different things it's just because your body is now limited it cannot it cannot express every impulse of the spirit hallelujah is that drizzling if it's raining we can we can do what we did last week please if we can walk people in um the season is almost gone so please let them come in let's make whatever sacrifice please sit down pray in tongues for one minute and then i continue we'll find somewhere this is a very serious series especially in the days that we live in Only you can satisfy me. Only you can satisfy my soul. Satisfy me. Only you can satisfy me. Only you can satisfy my soul. Satisfy my soul. Satisfy me, only you can satisfy my soul. Satisfy my soul. Only you can satisfy me, only you can satisfy my soul. That's why the Bible says let him that has an ear that means it is possible that you don't have that ear son of man he said what seest thou he said an almond tree he said you have seen correctly you can see wrongly please pay attention we're going to pray a platform for growth Thank you all of you who are standing. Thank you so much for your sacrifice. Let's go to number four. Why do we pray? Why do we pray? According to scripture. Number four. Prayer is a platform for warfare and intercession write it down please prayer is a platform for warfare and intercession don't worry wherever you can stand just find somewhere and stand a platform for warfare and intercession give us acts chapter 12 let's study the early church acts chapter 12 please it's a long reading but um, the verse of emphasis will be verse 5 and then we continue now please look up that prayer is a platform for warfare now um, when I say warfare especially in Africa warfare means many things to many people there are people who believe that warfare is some carnal confrontation of spirits in the flesh that is an ever continuous process without victory I don't believe that and then others also believe that the concept of warfare is just some kind of christian talk that does not exist i also don't believe that there is a healthy balance concerning the subject of warfare that must be communicated acts chapter 12 look up please now about the time herod the king stretched forth his hand to vex 
certain of the church. So we're talking about a man here under the influence of wicked spirits to persecute the church. Please don't lose your focus, don't lose your attention. Two, and he killed James, the brother of John with the sword. So James is dead now. Number three, and because he saw that it pleased the Jews, look at this wicked man, he proceeded further to take Peter also. Then were the days of unleavened bread, okay, during the feast. Four, and when he had apprehended him, he put him in prison and delivered him to four quaternions of soldiers to keep him, intending after Easter to bring him forth to the people. So he's about to destroy someone, the pillars of the church. Next verse. Peter, look at this. Peter therefore was kept in prison, but prayer was made without ceasing of the church unto God for him. Prayer was made without ceasing. And when Herod would have brought him forth, that same night, Peter was sleeping between two soldiers. Can you imagine it? Aside from the fact that he's in prison, the two soldiers held him, he's tied with chains, and they're also sleeping close to him. So that if he moves and they wake up, they can say, where are you going to? He was bound with two chains, but the, and the keepers before the door kept the prison. Next verse. And behold, the angel of the Lord. Wait till next week when I will show you the ministry of prayer and the angels. The angelic ministry that excel in strength. If you do not understand the ministry of angels in prayer and the warfare dimension of prayer, you will get into trouble. The Bible is full of the ministry of angels in prayer. The angel of the Lord came upon him and a light shined in prison and he smote Peter on the side and raised him up saying, Arise up quickly, and the chains fell off from his hand. They are praying and praying correctly because Jesus had taught them how to pray. Remember, before now, they were not getting results. Now, Jesus had mentored them, and the, the apostles now were mentoring the early church. So, there was no confusion as to whether the prayer would be answered or not. And while they prayed, something was happening in the realm of the spirit. We'll find out next week because the bible says that let it be done in the earth as it is in heaven and so an angel came from heaven to make sure what is in heaven happens in the earth he came to that prison and he said guard thyself angels can speak and bind on thy sandals and so he did and he said unto him cast thy garment about thee and follow me this is the angel next verse and he went out and followed him and wished not that it was true which was done by the angel but thought he was in a vision look at this he was already so used to visions he didn't know whether it was real or it was a visionary experience when they were past the first the second world they came to the iron gate which led to the city which opened of its own accord and they went out and passed through the street and forthwith the angel departed and said you can go now my brothers and my sisters look at this these are not parables can these things happen again why are they not happening if this is true and scripture cannot be broken that men prayed and physical angels let me give you let me give you a story i like teaching on these kinds of things listen i have many many stories on this let me give you one of my Okay, that would be the second or the third encounters with angels in the body now, not in visions. I was in Abuja um, one year, I can't remember, and then I got into a, a bus and I highlighted I was at Mararaba, you know, and my wallet fell and everything fell and the bus had gone. I was with one of my friends and you know it was so frustrating for me 
um, I think if I'm not mistaken, I hope it, will, it would be when we're trying to prepare for one of our crusades or so, and then everything had gone. And the town, it was busy. You would not even know which of the buses or who someone would have carried it. And I pleaded with my friend. I said, please, you have to just get a bike and then go to maybe where the park is and then they'll begin to check. I stood there and I was just praying in the spirit. And I remember the scripture that just came, he shall put his angels charge over thee and all of that. Now I tell the truth and I lie not. I fear God. I was standing there and the next thing, a man is limping. Remember the story? A man is limping with my wallet and brings to me and says, take and just turns and goes away. And I'm standing there and I'm looking at this man. What is your name? Who are you? At least let me say thank you. And after a while, I, I cannot remember seeing the man again. The first time we were going to hold our crusade in Joss, we were there and quite honestly we were confused and we did not know what to do. Suddenly a stranger walks up to me and says, get a bus and get a loud megaphone. He said, go around the city, remember, and do publicity. I never saw that man again. Angels are real. Our carnality has reduced us to a point where we don't even have the eyes and the perception. You would be, you would be joking to think everyone standing here is a human being. Do you know, I, I tell you the truth and I lie not. There are many times I shared it, I started sharing it during the early days of Koinonia, but you notice I stopped. I stopped saying it for a reason. There are times that I would be ministering like this. And suddenly, you know, many things happen as a man of God when you are ministering. You cannot say everything. There are times that I'm standing here already and I'm having multiple visionary experiences while I'm ministering. It's training. With time, your spirit is, you, you understand it so you are not distracted. And there are many times when God opens my eyes. Now I see people, now not from the body. I now see the spirit man of people. And suddenly, you know, in the realm of the spirit, you know that is an angel now. Because they excel in light. And suddenly you will check and you will find out that uh -uh, this person sitting down is not a human being. The moment they see me and we make contact, they will just stand up gradually and walk out. I've seen this thing many times when Koinonia started. I used to say it, but eventually I kept quiet because I don't want people to build their monuments. You know, people start to make all this uh, idolatry and the rest. So I understand what this scripture is saying. Listen, let me tell you, warfare is real and it is important to be able to bet victory. James chapter 5 and verse 13. We pray because it is an instrument of warfare. What is warfare? Establishing the will of God in spite of the contentions of darkness. That's warfare. Engaging scripture, engaging the mysteries of the kingdom in prayer to establish the will of God. Satan will never let your destiny go not without a battle. Just because God said all things are yours does not mean all things will come to you. Just because um, God said, oh, you'll be a great man, you'll be, he will attack you, he will attack your children, he will attack everything that can be attacked. I believe in warfare when it is biblically engaged. I believe that any believer who sits down and allows his destiny to move by default is in trouble. He will never win in life. Are we together? Warfare and intercession. What is intercession? Standing in the gap for someone else. Standing in the gap for a territory. Making petitions to heaven on behalf of an individual, on behalf of a territory. Listen, do you know why God allowed for intercession? Because of this explanation I'm giving. Because assuming, for instance, the spirit of death is attempting to take my life this night, and I do not have the faculty to discern. I can become a victim of it. And that means my destiny and all who are connected to me will be in trouble. So God, see, this how it is. It's a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a revelation of God's mercy. The mercy of God starts moving around that territory to find who has the discernment and the will to obey God. Do you understand? So it's like a cloud. The Holy Ghost will come upon somebody in his room. He will shake up and say, God forbid, I need to sleep. The Holy Ghost will live quietly. Find another house. 
but somehow he would just come to someone who just gets up and says something is wrong he now say pray pray in the spirit and while you are praying he does not know why he's praying and i do not even know him but because he's in the body his prayer life will now save me that's why when we get to heaven many people receive thank you for things they say well what is that he said in 1999 remember one three days fast you did that you don't even know what it was for that fast was what secured the man who would later become the president but you will never know that it was your prayer if Anna the prophetess did not intercede for Jesus they would have killed him believe me if Jesus could not die the angel would not say he run he was in the flesh the only thing is that the body will not decay are we together Anna the prophetess was praying imagine this kind of intercessor she sacrificed her life since her husband died see I'm teaching you many things in this series because if Anna the prophetess were in our generation and you saw Anna the prophetess and saw Apostle Joshua Selman Anna the prophetess will bow to me and say you are the great man of God and we are the quiet people whereas you do not know that the way things happen in the realm of the spirit those that may be making the greatest impact may not be the Joshua Selmans and all of these people as visible as we look there will be one quiet mama somewhere that is the backbone behind our success that we may never know God gives this mama a mandate and say mama you have 30 more years to live and your assignment every day is to pray for someone called Joshua Selman where is he in the world you don't need to know him I may never know that the health of this ministry the health of my life primarily may be founded upon that deep intercessory ministry if you really find an intercessor somewhere not just a, 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 a lazy person who just says I'm an intercessor but a real intercessor respect them see if I bless you you see me I prophesy to you you will package uh, uh, help those under the anointing you package offering and come and give me is that true if I speak over your life they can carry that message all around the world people will watch the videos and see me speaking they will open doors for me but if I intercede for you there is no man who will see me to say thank you these are the people who are greatly prized in the spirit some of them are here they don't even believe that they are in ministry. I just have the grace for intercession. Do you know there are times that I'm sleeping and it's as if they are soaking me inside hot water. I know somebody somewhere is shouting on heaven or me. I can always say, allow me sleep small now. There are times I know it's prayer band. That fire is coming from prayer band Tuesday. <laughs> there are times I know that individuals are just praying. They prayed for Jesus. The Bible never said Anna the prophetess stopped praying after the dedication. She just said, my eyes have seen the consolation of Israel. Intercession is powerful. Listen to me. Don't sit back and allow the devil destroy your loved ones. I shared with you the story about my mom one time that I saw what I saw. You must learn to pray. Some of you are not only lazy spiritually. You are responsible for the pain of many people. This is why sometimes when God is quarreling people, you think you are innocent. He will come and say, you are part of the reasons why these people are not doing well. Oh God, why? I put a burden on you to pray one time and you just carelessly said, it's not my business. There are selfish believers until God, that's why God will use the face of someone you love. It's not that something is wrong with that person. That's the only way. It's not always demons. It is the only way to wake you up to pray. Because if you saw another person, your selfishness will not allow you to stand up. So you see the face of the person who promised to marry you. And say, no, God, this cannot happen. I've waited long. And God said, that's it. You will be rewarded for praying. But that was the only skill to be able to lift you.
Hallelujah. Warfare and intercession. James 5.13 Is any man afflicted? He says, let him do what? Is any man afflicted? The biblical approach to affliction is any man challenged by a situation you cannot understand before you sit down and start using your brain because you see in the flesh you will calculate wrongly what is going on my children suddenly are falling sick in a way that i cannot explain suddenly money is disappearing in this family suddenly my wife my husband my children is like there is no peace suddenly my grandmother is hating me i came out in the morning Three accidents before returning back home. Already, if you are sensitive, that is affliction. The Bible says, don't sit down and start discussing scientifically. It says, start praying. Because when you pray, among the many things that happen is that you begin to perceive. You are allowing your spirit man in partnership with the Holy Spirit to draw forth what the real issue is and communicate to you. Hallelujah. How many of you have ever been confident about a decision? You were so bold until you prayed. Somewhere in that prayer, you stood and said, God, thank you. Oh, this is how I would have died. You felt like Ghana is the place God is sending you. In fact, everything in you was just spelling Ghana until you went to pray. When that prayer was done, you were embarrassed. You just stood there and said, so this is how I would have been on my way. Are we together? You know powerful believers by this one thing. They will tell you, Kai, I want to do this, this and that. And then two weeks later, they just keep quiet. They say, you won't do it again. I know what has happened to them. They have, they have gone to fine tune that thing. A brother just looks at a sister and can almost be confident. I say, no, Abba, I know based on what I'm feeling, this is my wife. Until you go to pray. While you are praying, the flesh and the feelings are giving way to destiny. And when you rise up, then you will know that you would have made nonsense of your life. You now come back and say, thank you, Jesus. Are we together? Someone can come to you and say, I'm a real estate mogul. I'm this and that and that. And you are sitting down. You want to carry all your land papers and everything and give the person. And you just say, okay, let me just sleep over it, sir. Would you come tomorrow morning? Say, oh, fine, no problem. Until you are sleeping in the night and you wake up and begin to pray. And you find out that your entire destiny would have gone down because of lack of discernment. When believers don't pray, you know a believer who does not pray by the repetition of trouble that he always gets into. See, when you are getting into trouble again and again, every bad thing waits till you come, then it happens. Something is wrong with your prayer life. I'm telling you this. Let's hurry up. I'll give us two and then we'll end. Is this series already blessing you? Number what now? Why do we pray? Can you imagine we're just on why we pray? Why do we pray? Number five. Prayer according to scripture is a strategy to keep your faith alive. It's a strategy to keep your faith alive. Luke chapter 22. Media, please give us quickly. Luke chapter 22 from verse 30 to 32. Luke chapter 22, please. That ye may eat and drink at my table and all of that and all of that. 31. And the Lord said, Simon, Simon, Satan had desired to have you like a possession, right? And that he may sift you like wheat. Huh? He says, but I have prayed for thee that thy faith fail not. So how does Satan sift men? He does something to your faith. What is faith? Conviction. Conviction. Listen. 
when satan wants to sift you like wheat remember the bible said a double-minded man let him not think he will receive anything from the lord so when satan wants to make sure you don't receive anything he will begin to make you doubt your convictions he will manipulate the flesh realm and make sure that what you believed god but didn't you tell me this by january and now you are thinking is it god is it not god satan is attempting to sift you is it really extraordinary fruitfulness god this is september did apostle really hear god well because it looks like it would have been the year where your stamina is built because this is my thing has been I've, I've not seen any fruitfulness satan is sifting you like which let me tell you and he says when you pray you stop your faith from failing your conviction there are many things that believing them may be difficult for you but start praying start praying a word has been spoken concerning you ah by november by december this would have happened doors would have opened you will say amen but you too you know you don't believe it your pain has overwhelmed you are used to prophecies not coming to pass so you don't believe it but when you begin to pray something begins to happen in your spirit man it's like a gate it's like a compression that is broken suddenly you can believe god yes this is real lord i know you are able to do it prayer is a way that we keep our faith alive let me give us one more number six why do we pray the sixth reason why we pray is that it is a platform to make requests and petitions prayer is the authorized biblical platform to table your requests and to make petitions you don't make petitions in this kingdom by complaining the bible says do everything without complaining or arguing let me tell you this most believers do not pray most of what we think is prayer is just blind fleshly carnal argument what is this is this how life will treat me and god you are watching like that are you praying no you are not praying you are lamenting lamentation does not have a harvest of answered prayer no unto him that answers prayer hears prayer not complaints hears prayer not grumbling mark eleven twenty four. please quickly our time is gone mark eleven twenty four, and then philippians chapter 4 and verse 6 mark eleven twenty four. look at this jesus is teaching now therefore i say unto you what things soever ye desire everybody say desire one more time say desire, desire. when you pray believe that ye receive them and ye shall what Amen. three things one your desire number two reception number three manifestation you first receive before you have you cannot have what you have not received you don't receive things physically you receive them in the realm of the spirit you have them physically so it says what things soever ye desire prayer is the channel that makes your desire to be received and then to manifest when you pray so you can have desires and leave them there and you find out that nothing ever changes in your life desires Philippians chapter 4 and verse 6 Philippians 4 and verse 6 look up please let's read together our time is gone but please read with me one to read be careful for nothing hold on the word there careful um, it's not it's not trying to say you should live a careless life are we together the word careful there um what's what's the expression now huh the word there is anxiety are we together now other versions will correct it and say be anxious for nothing right so be anxious let's use for nothing then it says but in everything that means there is no matter that you should not pray for in everything the Bible does not isolate certain things and say don't pray for them. Are we together? There is no issue that cannot be prayed for. This is where we must put a little correction to our teaching on finance. A lot of people say 
prayer has nothing to do with finance uh -uh. there are keys are we together anytime prayer is not the key prayer is the hand that holds the key in any case you will still need prayer either as the key or the hand that will hold the key to open the door a key does not open itself so prayer is important the bible says in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving let your request be made known unto God. This is a very interesting scripture because in one of the scriptures we read, the Bible says, for your heavenly father already knows the things that you need. And now he's saying, make your request known to God. God wants the saints to make their request known because he answers prayers. You have many requests. Oh God, my house rent. Oh God, the issue of my stubborn child. Oh God, the issue of my destiny. I'm tired of escorting men in life, not knowing where I stand. Oh God, the issue of my finances. Oh God, the issue of fruitfulness. Oh God, the issue of this and that, the issue of my job. It's been 10 years, 20 years now, no job. The Bible says, don't be ashamed to make your request known unto God. That means it is not out of scripture when you pray in understanding. You can make your request known in God to God are you seeing why sometimes we come with our request here at miracle service we are making it known to God it is scriptural God wants to know bring before him your request because he will answer James chapter 4 verse 2 and 3 James chapter 4 now look up look up God is speaking now requests are very important in as much as prayer is not is not just for only asking things there is a major part of prayer that was designed to allow your petitions reach heaven the bible says ye lost and have not that means ye desire so strongly and yet you don't have it ye kill huh, and desire to have and cannot obtain you fight that means look at the alternatives you have introduced whereas prayer would have still given it to you the inability to have prayed will make you to desire in an ungodly way that thing whether money or whatever and to kill even because of it and then to fight because of it he says ye have not simply because you ask not that means if you can ask there will be no reason to kill no jealousy none of these things because the same lord is rich unto all he's saying if you don't know how to ask you will continue to admire people and to hate people's breakthroughs and to hate their testimonies as though god isolated them and blessed them alone if you know how to ask the bible says you have not and you ask not then it says you ask and receive not because you ask amiss what we started correcting okay that he may consume it upon your lust. We'll deal with it, the patterns of prayer. What does it mean to consume it upon your lust? That means the ultimate scope of your desire is just to satisfy yourself. There is nothing kingdom in it. You will now understand the prayer of Jesus. Thy kingdom come. It is within the scope of the kingdom that he says, give us our daily bread. Give us our daily bread so that we'll be strong enough to continue making your kingdom come. Once you detach the kingdom, you also detach the possibility for your daily bread. Your daily bread is connected to your desire and your participation in making his kingdom come. This is what he's saying. Listen to my teaching for your glory. Where I teach that in this kingdom, God is not obliged to stand and partner with you on any matter that does not have a provision to give him glory our selfish world has mastered how to use the realm of the spirit to draw realities for our own personal desires why do you want a child why do you want the marriage why do you want the prosperity apostle i'm tired people have been looking down on me I'm, i want them to know that i'm not a nobody and God says that is the kind of nonsense prayer that will not be answered. Why won't it be answered? Because there is no provision for kingdom in it. Are we together now? Oh God, I want all my children to excel. Why? 
so that everybody will know that I'm not a small woman. And God says, this is a joke, not in my kingdom. It's not done that way. Lord, I want money to buy a new rapper. Why? So that every woman in that church will know that me too, I'm not a, I'm not, this and, and God looks at all these things and says, what do you think I am? An ATM uh, uh, machine? He's the Lord of all. But let him find your heart plugged towards his kingdom come. Father, I'm trusting you to give me twins so that I can hurry up and have children and have the grace to serve you. God says, before you finish, twins are on their way coming. You will roast every devil on the way between the second heavens and that womb and make sure those twins come. Let me tell you this. I have learned something about God. You want to see the speed of God in your life? Die to yourself and say, Lord, this is about you. It's all about you. Jesus and all this is for you it's for your glory and your fame it's not about me as if you should do things my way you alone are God and I surrender one more time it's all about you is one big secret in my life I submit to you you will see the hand of God in fearful ways when everything about your life becomes about him what name are you looking for for yourself if the name it is is just so that he will find expression then he will shake the heavens and the earth and give you that name wealth and prosperity there are many gullible people who love money oh god give me money why they mocked at me that day and lord this shame must live my life and god says uh -huh. this is not how i walk everything in my world is consistent with my purposes and if your life cannot find a bearing in my purposes you see let me tell you this there most of our prayer in church are lost driven prayers let's tell ourselves the truth what do i mean by lost driven prayer it is either the kind of prayer that was sponsored by a competitive spirit i want to have this too lord i want this anointing the other day i saw this guy prophesying as if i was not called into ministry god are you going to put this grace on me or just let me just go and look for a job and god says you hear what you are saying requests you ask and you have not because you ask amiss what is being amiss so that you will satisfy yourself i have cried this secret to the body of christ again and again and i pray that this time around believers will get it there is excellency in stepping out of the way and let god have his way when you let god have his way you will not be in the dark can god be in a place and his light not be on you this mundane pursuit for fame this mundane pursuit for recognition this mundane pursuit for this and that is why many people pray amiss someone sent me a text one day i said ah pussy you are enjoying no i said you see the, the kind of talk this i know what he meant to say because they see all these photos and see all these things and and that statement is not a commendation it's a derivative of lost did god send you to ministry just to enjoy is ministry a platform is, is it because of the clothes the head oh no all those things are there because of him 
and his purposes please hear me. if this is all you hear in the next two minutes to pray if you leave this place tonight with this purified motif that everything about me is for him get to that point in your life and watch God arise for you that is the point where anybody who touches you touches the apple of his eyes he will shake kingdoms for your sake the kind of prayer that produces power why am I praying for more anointing father greater anointing greater revelation why why so that I will be a very senior man of God that people can see and acknowledge and God says not in my world in my dealings in my economy with men I will not walk that way are we together We're going to pray the prayer ministry is an advantage is one of the dominion systems of the saints God has helped us to look at a few things part one next week we'll continue and now begin to deal with the dynamics of effective prayer as intended by God not as intended by culture not as intended by religion hold someone's hand and let's pray in the spirit for just two three minutes please pray outside inside pray have been closed but the Lord wants to open those doors come let me tell you this look at me it takes more than the ability to provide value and to provide solutions in as much as that is the basis of your reward there will have to be a prophetic dimension that gives acceleration to the works of your hands hallelujah you believe in Jesus yes, sir. father I pray you have brought this gentleman you are a mecca come what he says to one he says to all in the name of Jesus Christ I stretch my hands go and prosper now I release the grace upon you in the name of Jesus Christ and for you my friend I pray for you God is the helper of men I pray that you will enjoy his help by the power of the Holy Spirit in the name of Jesus Christ one last prayer the Lord is ministering to me and he's showing me a family here you didn't come alone but this has been one two three four five miscarriages one two three four five please who is that person five miscarriages and the Lord wants me to minister to that person and will go straight to the ministry of the word while that is happening there is a gentleman not a lady a gentleman the power of God will come upon him and you shout under the anointing loud to the hearing of everybody please bring that gentleman out
my dear look at me you are the one is your husband here husband where are you why did you leave your wife to come alone the word is let's celebrate the husband as he comes to stand don't be ashamed the Lord himself is visiting that family my friend under the anointing the Bible says the shouts of joy and victory shall not depart from the tent of the righteous therefore I speak to you everything that has stolen away your joy and your testimony as a family I command it to let you go now in the name of Jesus let me pray miscarriage I want to pray don't worry I'll pray for you wherefore God had so highly exalted him and given him a name something is coming on your wife it's over now now two of you over now I'm seeing a spirit that is back of her miscarriage I challenge you by the God of heaven let her go now let me pray for you father I stretch my hands ah, I'm seeing fire leaving my hands and just coming on you everything that will not let you be fruitful is a command whatever will want you to disobey that command I open up your wombs in the name of Jesus and according to the time of life I decree and declare return with your miracle children regardless the medical report we stand by the God of heaven and we declare oppression in the area of fruitfulness come to end now in the name of Jesus Christ please return back rejoicing my God will surprise you it will surprise you in the name of Jesus Christ One prayer while you are standing. Father, my portion for this night, if I receive it by faith, it will not elude me. Please lift your voice and pray. Don't be tired of praying. We'll be seated shortly. My portion. God is a God of portions. Are you praying? hallelujah please be seated if you can God bless you tonight we're going to be brief in this place but I believe with my heart all my heart that the testimonies that will come out from tonight's meeting will truly bring glory to the name of Jesus Pastor Israel, I'm seeing oil being poured on your head. In the name of Jesus Christ. I stretch my hands. The grace for signs and wonders. In the name of Jesus, may that grace come upon you. May that grace come upon you. Let it distinguish your ministry. In the name of Jesus. You will walk in tremendous dimensions of signs and wonders. In the mighty name of Jesus. Amen and amen. Malachi chapter 2 and verse 2. While seated, I want us to take a minute or two to just thank the Lord for his marvelous hand. I cannot begin to tell you 
the great and awe-inspiring things that the Lord continues to do in and through our lives across the nations of the earth. Please give us that scripture, Malachi chapter 2 and verse 2. If ye will not hear, and ye will not lay it to heart to give glory unto my name, saith the Lord of hosts, it says, I will even send a curse upon you, and I will curse your blessings. Yea, I have cursed them already, because you will not lay it to heart. There is something about God's desire to be glorified, that when we experience his, his manifest presence, his miracles, his signs, and his wonders, we must be very intentional about giving him glory. Whilst you are seated in one minute, can you say thank you Jesus for that which you continue to do in my life for that which you continue to do in this ministry you have so lavishly honored this ministry within the time that we have been in this city you have shown yourself mighty and all across the globe salvations healings tremendous miracles transformation by the power of your word we lay it to heart to give you praise this is the lord's doing cannot be the doing of a man and we thank you we thank you don't be tired thank him for the numerous promotions advances in the spirit equipping you with sufficient spiritual knowledge and understanding helping you to stand strong preservation we thank you we thank you we lay it to hearts to give you glory in the name of jesus christ in the name of jesus christ in micah chapter 4 when you begin to read from verse 1 the bible speaking through prophet micah he said in the last days it shall come to pass that the mountain of the house of the lord shall be established in the top of the mountains and it shall be exalted above the hills and the bible says people or nations shall flow to it verse 2 is my point of interest it says many nations not a few many nations will come and say come let us go up to koinonia the mountain of the lord and to the house of the god of jacob the bible says he will teach us his ways so the end time manifestation of the house of god is a place of light a place of spiritual illumination please listen carefully you have to make a covenant with yourself and your destiny that you are going to submit to the word of god and place irreplaceable value on the word of god it says i commend you to god and then to the word of his grace which is able to build you up and then to give you an inheritance among them that are sanctified we must place premium on the word of god it is god's instrument for transformation it is god's instrument for signs and wonders habakkuk chapter 3 when you read from verse 3 and 4 verse 4 amplified says in that light is the hiding place of his power the power of god is hidden in his light john chapter 1 and verse 5 and the light shineth in darkness and the darkness comprehended it not paul was mentoring the church in Colossae, chapter 1 and verse 9 colossians 1 and verse 9 and he prayed bowing his knees to the father of our lord jesus christ that they be filled number one with the knowledge of his will number two that they be filled with all wisdom and then number three spiritual understanding there is no hope for the believer who does not contend for illumination illumination to the degree to which um you are able to drive away every darkness around your life you know when you get born again you are introduced to the ministry of the holy spirit the bible says and among the many things that the holy spirit does is to guide you into all truth are we together now and when he the spirit of truth is come the bible says he will guide you he will guide you 
he will reveal to you the precepts the ways of god so every time we tabernacle week after week this is not just a convergence of christians honoring a spiritual activity it's more than that every opportunity that we have to be exposed to his power his grace our hearts must be intentional because it is the entrance of his word that gives light and then the bible declares that it gives understanding unto the simple your stamina and your dominion in this kingdom is predicated upon spiritual illumination light Isaiah 33 says wisdom and knowledge shall be the stability of your time you have to know the ways of God the ways of God define the modus operandi of the kingdom God has a method God has how he lifts God has how he restores God has how he blesses God has how he keeps the saints in victory. He says, now thanks be unto God, which causes us always to triumph. And so our assignment as ministers of the gospel is to expose the body of Christ and those who have been given and are planted under our spiritual um, jurisdiction to provide the requisite level of spiritual intelligence the requisite level of knowledge that number one helps you to know the Lord and then number two equips you with the keys it takes to walk in victory experientially are we together that means that after a while of exposing yourself to the truth of God's Word you must come to a point where you are strengthened you are equipped equipped Ephesians chapter 4 when you read from verse 9 down to 11 the Bible says it's for this reason that he gave unto some apostles and prophets and evangelists pastors and teachers why for the equipping some versions say equipping others say maturing perfecting of the saints We have all kinds of professionals in our midst. We have doctors, we have business people, we have politicians and, and so on and so forth. You are not equipped by just giving every and any tool. You are equipped by giving the tools that you will need to excel. Imagine with me, for instance, that a farmer goes to the farm and the equipment that you give him is a syringe, is an injection. Are we together now? a bandage those are useful equipment but not for farming so the bible says in colossians chapter 3 from verse 16 it says let the word of christ dwell in you richly then it says in all wisdom the word of christ can dwell in you richly but not in wisdom the wisdom part is that you are equipped methodically you are equipped in a way and manner that supplies the spiritual arsenals um, such that you not only have these truths but you know how to use them if and when occasions demand are we together the end of knowledge is to be able to solve problems to provide solutions with the information that you have any information that is not able to solve your problem is almost useless are we together so this is not an advocacy just to communicate random truth mm -mm. There is an intentional project to equip you with the requisite body of knowledge listen carefully please listen carefully when it has to do with the knowledge of god exploring the person of god it will take eternity we will never exhaust him even in heaven there is room to come up hither we will continue to know him as his glory unfolds but as far as our excelling in this kingdom is concerned please listen there is a finite body of spiritual information that we need you can handle the truth that makes for your victory here and now the narrative that the truths we need to excel in life are so many and infinite it's not an accurate narrative you can understand the principles that make for speed for restoration for favor for increase 
just like a student continues to learn even after graduation but there is an exact body of truth that is responsible for awarding him a degree in a field and he can exhaust it and hold a degree as a testament that I have faithfully exhausted this body of light so our advocacy is to bring us to a point of accuracy spiritually that you know what keys are responsible for what outcomes this is the whole idea of victory you know i said it at the first service the inaugural service that many believers have truth it's like a house how many of you know that a house has many rooms and not all keys open every door is that true yeah. if you are in that house and the only door that is opened is the door to your living room if what you need to do is just to relax that's fine but if you need to use the restroom and you do not have the key that opens the restroom you are in trouble if you need to go to the kitchen and you do not have the key that opens the kitchen you are in the house but you will still be frustrated so the bible says and i will give you the keys of the kingdom these keys control favor they control speed they control your prayer life week after week god begins to hand these keys to us so after a while of immersing yourself in this truth you stand surrounded by mysteries like chariots and you can take on life with confidence you are not shadow boxing you are not hoping listen the laws of the kingdom are so powerful they are protected by god's own jealousy are we together The Bible says, how shall they hear without a preacher? And how shall the preacher go except he be sent? Except he be sent. So please do not take lightly and do not take casual every opportunity you have to learn the ways of God. God is taking away from our lives the religiosity around information that cannot produce results. I know something about prayer. I know something about fasting. I know something about night vigil. I know something about communion. I know something about the name of Jesus. And we have little, little um, dimensions of scattered spiritual truth that are not synergized to produce victory in our lives. So our Christian experience becomes one that is full of fear because we do not know the, the, the arsenals that were designed to command what level of victory there is a random pursuit listen the faith life can be an interesting adventure when you are equipped with knowledge you're no longer ignorant you know you know what it takes to bring favor you know what it takes to open closed doors the goal is never for a man of God to stand and become king of kings and lord of lords over your life uh -uh. the goal is that by the election of grace you are immersed under this atmosphere of knowledge and that you are equipped to the point where you now become a savior yourself on the strength of the truth that you know and you have result after result it now begins to strengthen your confidence you get to a point where you are no longer doubting you are not hoping does this work does this not work you know he said i know whom i have believed and i am persuaded hallelujah are you blessed the saints are built in this kingdom through the communication of the word more specifically the exegesis of doctrine doctrine is the name given to the course content the course curriculum that builds the believer to a point of stature and maturity in the spirit so more than the miracles and the manifestations in as much as those things are very important but we must submit ourselves to the methodical approach of spiritual growth where we not only know the Lord but we understand his ways they are called the mysteries of the kingdom Jesus said I am the way I'm not only a person I am God's authorized method you can study Jesus the way as the pathway to victory please run away from that Christian narrative that continues to endorse and justify failure in your life 
provided you are knowing the Lord it downplays the place of excelling in life and makes it look like there is no need you believe that narrative no matter how well intentioned you will use your lifetime paying the price for it I am come he said John chapter 10 and verse 10 he says the thief cometh not but for to steal to kill and to destroy then he says I am come that he may have life that is a level then he says and then to have it more abundantly so there is life and there is abundant life life the peace that you have with God based on the impartation of eternal life more abundant life is eternal life in your spirit alongside a victorious life on earth that is abundant life I made up my mind years ago that I will never lead a people who excel in their spirit work prayer fellowship with God and then become failures in life and their lives become a reproach to the victory that was won when Jesus said it is finished he did not only mean the sin problem was finished he also meant dominion had been restored are we together now you have to believe the whole counsel of God many times some of these erroneous doctrines come out of a combination of pride and frustration pride because we do not open ourselves to learn more frustration because we exhaust the body of knowledge we know and so we are not able to command other levels of results in frustration we now build a theology around our failure to explain away the possibility of complete victory a believer can have complete victory you can love the Lord and grow in passion while your finances also grow while your influence grows while you enjoy longevity and have peace with your children this is abundant life are we together if it is true that the gospel and the kingdom life was designed to be useful to everyone then it means it must capture within itself the ability to solve every problem we find on earth. I believe in the whole counsel of God. And by the grace of God, I will not fail to bring to us spiritual truth after spiritual truth. My assignment is to labor with the Spirit and in partnership with other vessels across the body of Christ to sieve and piece together the working knowledge of the word the spiritual principles that are assigned first for our knowledge of God in experience and then for our excelling in life and to serve it so passionately and diligently to whoever is interested that if and when you embrace these truths and you believe them and apply them you know many times we say one word from the Lord can change your life that's not exactly true one word from the Lord that is accurately taught understood and engaged with understanding that is the word that produces you read your Bible the Bible says that the sower came and sowed the word Satan himself came and uprooted the seed Satan is not afraid of the word he is afraid of the union of the word with the believer who understands it remember that his assignment his office in heaven was the light bearer he was the custodian of the mysteries of the kingdom he's not afraid of the word what satan is afraid of is your understanding the word and you're engaging it because the power of god is released at the instance of your understanding and applying not just receiving are we together praise the name of the lord so let me just use a few minutes to touch on a topic that I believe would help to accelerate our growth Psalm 65 verse 2 the mystery of prevailing prayer the mystery of prevailing prayer I want to teach you something about prayer to add to your spiritual arsenals that will command victory after victory in your life the Bible says oh thou that hearest prayer this immediately tells you not everybody can hear prayer oh thou that hearest prayer it says unto thee shall all flesh come 
this statement is both an acknowledgement and a recommendation the writer is recommending that among the many people who claim to be able to hear and answer prayer through my research i have found out that there is only a single individual who sustains the ability to hear prayer and my recommendation is all flesh if you really need your prayer answered there is one who hears prayer he says unto thee shall all flesh come the subject of prayer is a very interesting one because every religion regardless what they believe they believe in prayer as the medium of communicating with the divine almost every religion believe that there is a reality beyond the three-dimensional realm they have all kinds of propositions that have been strengthened by their experiences but altogether they believe that there is some force or some deity above and beyond the realm of science that can come into partnership with men here and now and produce dimensions of victory that is not given to ordinary men so the subject of prayer is not new across religions across all kinds of faith practices but then the challenge many times has been that believers become frustrated because after dissipating hours and energy in what we know and call to be prayer it looks to me and to many of us in our experience that the amount of energy even physical and emotional energy that is being exerted into this activity we call prayer doesn't seem commensurate to the results that follow are we in agreement so week in week out we have the house of God across this city, across this nation, filled with professing believers who are praying in some way, many adding with fastings. But when you compare the level of energy, the level of zest and zeal and emotional strain that we go through in that activity we call prayer versus the result that comes from it, it doesn't seem to add up. And yet the Bible tells us that God is love the Bible tells us God is Abba, that he is more willing, if he did not spare his son Jesus, he's more willing to give us all things. Are we together? Luke chapter 11. The disciples began to study the life and the ministry of Jesus. Now, until Jesus came, John the prophet, who we call the Baptist, had his disciples some of them later became the disciples of jesus theologically speaking and they saw him pray they saw him do a lot of things and um mentorship sessions and here's what he said he said when a spirit leaves a man jesus is teaching now when a spirit leaves a man that that spirit goes through dry regions looking for a place of refuge why is that so there's no time to explain it to you you see God, spirit beings have spirit bodies. There is something called the law of territory. You are only at ease in a territory when you are made up of the same material with that territory. Are we together now? That means if you are in heaven, you will never be at peace until you are made with the material of that atmosphere. Are we together now? This disembodied spirit you see, when they left their original estate, you know what that means? Because angels and these spirit beings can translate into different states. Not just like men that were here, always human. Now, to perform certain assignments, they would have to translate, downgrade themselves to certain levels. They did that in rebellion and when they tried to return back to their original estate, they were hijacked. So till today, all these embodied spirits are in a state of restlessness because they are not in heaven and they are roaming around the earth and in the earth here they are violating a law of territory because they do not have a material body for their spirits to find rest are, are you understanding it now so constantly these embodied spirits are in a straight loitering across the length and the breadth of the earth and the way god created the human body is that there is a possibility of multiple spirits coexisting in the same body it is not only one spirit that can coexist one man had a legion you remember in the bible 
That's to tell you how scarce accommodation is for these demons. That a legion can make do with one body to find rest. So don't play games with your body. That's to tell you bodies are serious real estate issues in the realm of the spirit. Oh yes. When demons see bodies that are available, they don't play games with it. No. A body has now prepared for me. So, when these spirits find expression in a body, they find some level of rest. They can occupy animals like they, they entered the swine. Is that true? But the most comfortable body is the human body why because humans are the zenith of god's creation and their level of complexity can allow the demons to find expression the presence of will emotion and intellect can allow them to find expression they may not have that level of liberty with animals so there is a constant search for bodies but here's where i'm going the bible says when a demon leaves a human body it gets back into that state of restlessness are we together it goes around dry regions and not finding a place here's what the demons will say like the prodigal son the demon will say i will arise and go back and go back to my house the demon is still calling the place he left my house that means in his mind there is still a possibility of returning and then the bible says when it comes he will find that body swept he will find that body clean but it finds it empty and the demon is kind enough to invite other demons higher than itself to build fortification to return to that individual so that the latter part of that individual is worse than the beginning herein lies the mystery behind people who get free momentarily and then it looks like their situation multiply because they did not know what to do with the house of god my house shall be called the house of prayer there are six reasons i've written here why all believers must pray there are six reasons i've written here we'll take that for tonight and pray if you do not understand um, do you know do you know please look up do you know the average believer prays largely to ease the guilt of looking like an unserious christian they are not really interested in the results subconsciously there seems to, if you are a believer and you are living among other believers, you know, prayer has a way of intimidating you. Someone is praying seriously and that prayer is judging your own seriousness. You keep looking at yourself and in response to that sense of judgment, you find a way of conforming to that religious activity as an act of appeasal. You're not interested in the results. The reason is because most of our prayer is not motivated by understanding. We have not been taught what prayer does. And so we just do it because Jesus did it. We just do it because it makes us feel spiritual. But let me show you six biblical reasons why believers must pray. Ready? Number one, the first reason, and those of you who are following from your homes, from every nation please do well to write it down so that you can teach others too we need to mature the body by helping them understand what prayer does the first reason why we pray is that god commanded that we pray it is a command two scriptures luke chapter 18 and verse 1 popular scripture i use it a lot when teaching especially around the subject of prayer this was a parable now, in his F work, Jesus used a lot of parables. Why? Because his listeners were not spiritual people. They were not regenerated. Their organs of interacting with the realm of the spirit had not been developed through the ministry of the word and prayer. So he had to employ parables to help them explain how the kingdom works. And he spake a parable to this end. The morale of the parable is that men, everybody say men. 
men here doesn't just mean the male gender men humans that humans ought always to pray and not to faint so it's a command the whole idea of the story is to bring us to a point where we understand the power and the excellency of prayer the bible says there was a city verse 2 luke 18 and verse 2 there was a city in a city a judge may you never meet this kind of judge in your life in jesus name Amen. my apologies to those who are those of us who are judges and magistrates i'm your friend there was in a city a judge look at the description of this kind of man the bible says which feared not god that means it's difficult for god to speak to him number two he neither regarded man you couldn't bribe him you couldn't come and beg what sort of a man is this so this is scene one and then scene two the bible says there was a widow a widow is a supposedly a defenseless woman. her source of security and defense has been taken away from her he's teaching you the power of prayer and then the bible says she came to him that man avenge me of my adversary verse 4 the bible says he would not for a while but afterwards he said within himself my god that means there's something prayer does even to the most hardened situation if you pray with time there is an energy that prayer exerts that begins to change even the most impossible situations he says though i fear not god so the man is aware he's aware of his condition it's not just that the writer is telling lies the man is aware he's testifying here now that even though i do not fear god nor regard man verse 5 it says yet because this widow troubled me so there is something that prayer does to situations and circumstances i will avenge her lest by her importunity or the bible says her continual coming she weary or weaken me this is an illustration to show you what prayer does in the realm of the spirit that no matter how weak and defenseless you are if you can engage prayer consistently that it can do something in the face of situations and circumstances prayer is a command once you are a man if you are an angel and you are a spirit you don't need to pray but provided you are wearing this material body the bible mandates that we pray first thessalonians 5 and verse 17 second scripture for that point let's hurry up first thessalonians 5 and verse 17 apostle paul is speaking to the church in thessalonica and he says pray without season the word pray without season does not mean pray from morning till night every day you do that you become an irresponsible man you will not be able to fulfill other things the idea here is be consistent the power of prayer is not just in the activity but the consistency pray without season number two why should we pray according to first corinthians chapter 14 and verse 2 the bible recommends prayer as one of the strategies for fellowship with god and fellowship with heaven the bible says in this case speaking about praying in an unknown tongue it says for he that speaketh in an unknown tongue speaketh not unto men but unto god now there's no time to contrast this with what the bible calls diverse kinds of tongues there are two different experiences when we come to the series on the holy spirit then we touch the gifts of the spirit then i will teach you this the bible um creates a dichotomy between what it calls the, the gift of diverse kinds of tongues and the prayer language that was given to all believers this has been an age-long controversy in the body of christ as to whether it is all men that pray in tongues like all the other nine gifts um the gift of diverse kinds of tongues is not given to everyone but the prayer language it says for this promise is unto you and to your children and to your children's children as many as are far off even as many as the lord will call when you read all through the books of acts every time the holy ghost came it came on all of them no reservation they were all filled with the holy spirit they began to speak 
whether it's Acts chapter 2, whether it's Acts chapter 6 to 8, whether it's Acts chapter 19. The most classic sign or the most classic defense of the baptism of the Holy Spirit with the evidence of speaking in tongues is found in Acts chapter 19. Maybe we just look at that very quickly just to clear the air on that. Verse 1, the Bible says, Paul, having passed through the upper coast, the Bible says that um, he came to Ephesus and then he found certain disciples. Follow the discourse. Verse 2, he said unto them, have you received the Holy Ghost since you believed? And they said unto him, we have not so much heard whether there be any Holy Ghost. They were disciples. So you see, there was something about their teacher. Their teacher was not teaching them something. They said in our lecture we've not received this we don't even know that there's anything called the holy spirit surprise now he said unto what then were you baptized and they said unto john's baptism now the lecture begins verse 4 he said john's baptism verily verily john baptized with the baptism of repentance saying to the people that they should believe on him who should come after him that is on christ verse 5 when they heard this they were baptized in the name of the lord jesus the miracle now and when paul had laid his hands on them the holy ghost came on them and they spoke with tongues and prophesied the bible tells us their number verse seven the bible says and all the men were about 12 and they all received so i just thought to bring this in we have a separate series where we we'll deal with that praise the name of the lord but just for you to know that when we talk about the prayer language of tongues we're not talking about the gift of the diverse kinds of tongues are we together fellowship with god when you begin to pray in the spirit it brings fellowship in fact the bible says the grace of our lord jesus christ the love of god he says the fellowship that's where we get the word koinonia the sharing together the participation of the spirit he says let it abide with you let it remain with you let it be with you when you fellowship with God, with God you fellowship with the spirit there is a divine deposit that comes from God into you a transmission of power wisdom grace every spiritual virtue that makes for your excelling fellowship is very important are we together it is one of the tools for fellowship number three why does the bible mandate that we pray prayer is one of the authorized platforms for growth and for transformation prayer is one of the authorized platforms for growth and transformation first corinthians 14 and verse 4 just two verses after what we just where we just read first corinthians 14 and verse 4 the bible says he that speaketh in an unknown tongue edify it edify it the word edify is an architectural term you build yourself you build capacity in the spirit remember the bible says if you turn aside in the day of battle it is that your strength capacity is small so you build capacity in the spirit when you pray he that prays edifies himself luke chapter 9 luke chapter 9 probably one of the most classic representations of the transforming power of prayer luke chapter 9 verse 28 and 29 luke chapter 9 the bible says and it came to pass about and eight days after these sayings, he took Peter, John, and James and went up to the mountain to pray. Verse 29. The Bible says, and as he prayed, watch transformation. Two things happened. One, the fashion of his countenance was altered and his raiment became white and glistering. There is a dimension of beauty and glory. You evolve. It's like, it's like a transformation into superior dimensions of yourself when you pray i am telling you this works you can pray your way to higher dimensions of yourself growth and transformation 
bring for me a weak believer, timid, completely ignorant, but with the heart that is bent on prayer, I show you a sign and a wonder just a few months and a few years later. Let one day become one week, become one month, become one year, become three years, become five years, and I show you a sign and a wonder. Was it not Paul himself that says, I thank my God, I pray in tongues more than ye all. Are we together? I hope God is blessing us. Say amen. amen. It's very important that we pray. Growth and transformation is impossible for a believer if you do not pray. Now you see, for many believers, prayer is simply a tool for petitions and for receiving not transformation the primary assignment of prayer i'll be teaching as as we proceed in the series the primary assignment of prayer believe me is not for breakthroughs for miracles etc no most of the breakthroughs that we need we even need them in the first place because of ignorance of the principles of the kingdom remember the bible says when you are praying pray that your kingdom come because when his kingdom comes there are many things you will not need to ask for again because of the presence of the kingdom most of the miracles that we seek today are acts of god's mercy correcting our ignorance so if you understand the kingdom and the ways of god your prayers will largely be that of fellowship and growth not just petitions because the accuracy of your understanding will bring triumph after triumph result after result in your life is that true God's desire is not for us to live in the realm of what we know to be miracles signs and wonders they are supposed to be um, a thing of wonder to unbelievers largely but to we who are in the kingdom miracles help to escort us to the place where we get to maturity and accuracy in the spirit now we begin to live by the mysteries of the kingdom growth and transformation show me a believer who engages in prayer for many of us our prayer is not systemic it's not methodical it's haphazard if you are fortunate to wake up early in the morning good for god and good for you that day you can at least steal out 30 minutes quickly and feel spiritual and then backslide in a very very bad way until after one month or when situations wake you up then you quickly catch up you ask for forgiveness you repent and then you start again do you know that even in the secular mastery is gained through consistency ask anybody who leads his field in the secular you do not become a professional in anything by just freelancing and shadow boxing and getting your way you have to invest your time your energy your resources in ever increasing dimensions to attain mastery consistency growth and transformation you must get to a point where you see the relevance of prayer you discipline yourself you get up in the morning this is the day the lord has made you're praying Sheila Kapo, Siata. you understand edification you begin to deposit prayer i'll be teaching us as the series proceed that prayer is one of the mysteries that is not bound by time that means you can send it to your tomorrow to wait for you prayer is powerful yes sir your prayer can be like an usher like a protocol you send it into your tomorrow to verify that the road is clear before you arrive if for any reason it goes there and find demons attempting to go ahead you know what the woman's prayer did to that church that's exactly what will be happening while you come triumphantly it's dangerous to step into a realm that prayer did not usher you into it's risky because the whole world lies in wickedness are we together let's hurry up we have to pray Jude 1, Jude has only one chapter, verse 20. The Bible again talks about prayer. It says, but ye beloved, building up yourselves on your most holy faith, praying in the Holy Ghost. So prayer builds up. There are many ways that prayer builds up. It builds up by activating your organs of interaction with the realm of the Spirit. 
so when you begin to pray what happens to you is that your discernment and sensitivity is activated you can know then you come into dimensions where people like Papa Hagen now begin to talk about the knowing of the spirit where you can know things even though your eyes may not see angels but you can know they are here and at first when you start in the school of prayer it will look like you are lying but the accuracy and the predictability of your result will convince you eventually that that faculty of perception is not a lie you will know you will perceive danger prayer is powerful it brings you to a point where you are able to interact that duality of realms you are human yet you are spiritual you can be in a place and yet perceive spiritual realities number four the fourth reason why we pray in this kingdom is as an instrument for warfare and intercession yes sir warfare and intercession ladies and gentlemen demons are real spirits are real wickedness is real the devil is as determined as ever to see that he thwarts the purposes of God over our lives and all that concerns us meaning if you fold your hands and let him be he will shred your life and destroy your family and everything that pertains unto you but there is a provision in our dealing with God where believers can take advantage of the forces of the spirit that were all brought as a result of the finished work of Christ and through this mystery we call warfare and intercession we can engage and establish these realities in our lives here and now warfare and intercession is very powerful James chapter 5 and verse 13 Apostle James now is teaching us James 5 and verse 13 the Bible says is any among you afflicted buffeted is any among you in a situation that is unpleasant is many among you seeing the handwriting of Satan over your children your life your career your business don't explain it away using science or sociology it says the moment you find affliction the solution is let him pray we do every other thing but prayer we discuss with people who do not have the maturity nor the might to help us out of that situation and yet we do not pray is any among you afflicted he says let him pray for time's sake we may not read on but when you read down to 18 it uses Elijah it personifies an individual called Elijah that he was a man of like passions but he took the tool of prayer and literally stop rain physically not a parable over a territory let me tell you this Elijah was not the only one who believed in the God of the Bible and I'm sure there were people who said God don't mind him we command rain to come and yet rain did not come because a man had authority to prayer and God respected his authority regardless what you were saying that day you will keep talking if Elijah did not speak rain would not come may God give us that kind of authority that you can stand and speak over your family and say this year you all rise and go to bed it doesn't matter who is talking after you he spoke too late you have declared let all the enchantments and all the divination speak not the one that you pray and then you go and lie down and say what are they saying now no Elijah's authority when he declared it he said I know God he went to bed there were other prophets under the custody of Obadiah. I'm sure someone would have been annoyed and say, what an arrogant man. God, bring rain to show this man he's not the only one. And God said, no, he doesn't work like that. When you ascend in this spirit and you have authority, you will do wonders with it. He prayed for a space of three and a half years, there was no rain. And then to show you it was not luck, he went again and did the same thing and rain came. hallelujah warfare and intercession it was on the strength of prayer in Acts chapter 12 
when you read from verse 1 to 17 the Bible says Peter was bound hand and feet in chains they were preparing to kill him but the Bible says verse 5 that Peter was kept in prison but prayer was made without season that's Paul's encouragement now of the church unto God for him believe me when I tell you prayer is powerful they began to engage the realm of the spirit suddenly the Bible tells us that an angel came the angel was always available Peter would have died without that angel coming and yet the angel was available somewhere in this series we'll talk about the ministry of angels because most believers do not know anything about the ministry of angels the Bible says their assignment is to walk in partnership with the Holy Spirit to see that the Word of God is never called a lie in your life that's the assignment of angels they are enforcers that means when there is nothing happening from your end they keep loitering around did you know that one of the ways that Satan knows God is doing something with you is through the activity of angels in the realm of the spirit a prayerless believer does not have angelic activities what are they doing when Satan begins to sense unusual angelic activities he was once there so he knows uh -uh, these angels don't come for nothing they are coming in response when Jacob slept in chapter 28 of Genesis when he slept the Bible lets us know that he saw a ladder connecting to the heavens and angels were ascending and descending the Bible never said they were coming to him he only saw them walking they were going to those who were calling their ministry that was why he said the Lord was here these angels were passing me and they didn't do anything to me there's no record of any angel bringing anything to him yet they were ascending and descending angels can be in your compound they can be in your vicinity they can be in your office ascending and descending bringing testimonies for those who are praying do not make the mistake of Jacob Jacob said the Lord was in this place I had a chance for my lifting I had a chance for my rising but but according to the law of the will it will be scripturally incorrect for the angels to come and do anything you did not ask them to do I want to show you why many of you can have dreams and see a lot of angelic activities and yet nothing ever happens angels don't come because you're a Christian they come because there is a demand Jesus kept speaking he sent prayer to his future after three days I will rise it was not an information after three days I will rise when it was the third day God said you had the prayer an angel came rolled the stone and sat on it let me tell you if Jesus kept quiet and never said anything he would have been surprised what will happen after three days the body would not decay but you would not come out either let the redeemed of the Lord say so believe what I'm teaching you is why many people do not rise they come under strong influence of angelic activities but they are silent do you not know that this is how the spirit of depression works the assignment of the spirit of depression is to use obstacles to reduce you to a point of silence Balaam caused these people and Balaam said I tried but there is the shout of the king in the midst of them these are the mysteries that give us power and dominion in this kingdom when you pray there are tools of warfare you don't fight you only activate the laws that make warfare to be a reality so what we call warfare is not you fighting what we call warfare is you authorizing the host of heaven angel armies my brothers and my sisters you do not one angel two angels use hailstone is it in your bible when an angel stones you will you be alive look at the bible these things were not parables they actually
The angel appeared and told Joshua, Joshua removed his sword. Do you know why he removed his sword? Because God gave him a word. No man will be able to stand against you. So when the angel came, he said, who are you? And the angel had to answer because the word of God was in on him. If that angel kept quiet, he would have been surprised. It was not the knife. Joshua said, God told me something. Who are you? And the angel had to say, no, 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 hold on. It is true. Believe what I'm telling you. Don't play with what God has told you. You can take it to battle. Oh, he told me that in 2021, I am victorious. Oh, yes, I believe it. This is not some Pentecostal jargon. It is true. Please sit down. What then is the basis of our confidence if this is not true? Before Satan attacks you, let me tell you what happens. Satan is every other thing but a fool. Before he attacks you, he will research what you know and what you don't know. He will bring it together and build the strategy to attack you. He does not attack randomly. Satan examines. What do you know about prayer? What do you know about agreement? What do you know about prophetic connection? Oh, he doesn't know so much here. What do you know about giving? So he brings it. What strategy can we develop? What are the loopholes in his spiritual life? That becomes the basis for the strategy. Is why Satan is almost accurate when he strikes. Because he does not shadow box. He uses your knowledge and your ignorance. Puts them together and builds the strategy for your attack. If you are Satan, will you like me? Verse 5. Oh, number 5. Number 5. We have to finish. Luke chapter 22 from verse 30. Why does the Bible mandate that we pray? Prayer is now the platform to make our requests, our requests, our petitions known. Oh no, let's, I made a mistake, that's, that's point six, let's go to five. It's a strategy to keep your faith alive. The fifth point, please correct it. Prayer is a strategy for living faith. When you want your faith to be alive and living. Luke 22, two verses quickly. Verse 30 and 32. Luke 22. From verse 30 to 32. That he may eat and drink at my table in the kingdom and sit on thrones judging the twelve tribes of Israel. 31. And the Lord said, now watch this. Remember the first time Satan came to Jesus after the temptation in Matthew chapter 4? He came to him, it is written, it is written. Satan left for a season. The next time he would come, he did not come directly again. He came through Peter. Are we together now? And he used Peter's compassion to try to say something that would stop Jesus from going to the cross. And Jesus discerning, he said, mm -mm. Simon, Simon, behold. Satan had desired to have you that he may sift you as wheat. 32, what was the remedy? But I have prayed for you that your faith fail not. He says, and when you are converted, anytime you see people doubting what God has said, suddenly on Sunday you were believing. But on Tuesday it's like you are saying, look, this thing is like wisdom is profiting to the right. He said, use this same formula. To convert them tell them an attack is happening what suddenly happened that last week you are full of faith but right now it looks like you are just saying well, one day go better the wise saying that the devil uses to deceive us when your faith fails your convictions begin to dwindle the classic character of faith is found in Romans chapter 4 when you read it uses Abraham and Sarah as a portrait that he wavered not at his faith through unbelief. He counted God faithful. When you pray in the spirit, it truly keeps your faith alive. 
because how many of you have gone to a place of prayer you went doubting and you kept praying and suddenly it's like a generator all of a sudden courage you know that this is doable you even ask god forgive me for the kind of unbelief i used to come to pray now my heart is alive again and then number six and we'll wrap it up for tonight why does the bible mandate that we pray prayer is a platform to make requests and petitions are you seeing that for most believers this is the only one we know requests and petitions and yet that is just number six mark 11 and verse 23 and 24 mark 11 23 24 jesus caused the fig tree the next day it was caused and the disciples were surprised and he used the opportunity to teach them something about faith verily verily i say unto you whosoever shall say to this mountain be removed and cast into the sea shall not doubt in his heart but shall believe that those things which he saith shall come to pass the bible says he shall have whatsoever he saith the law is in verse 24 therefore i say unto you what things soever ye desire he says when you pray believe that you receive them and you shall have them it is in the place of prayer we receive and you can never have what you have not received there are two different things receiving and having is different receiving is spiritual having is the manifestation if you have not received it in the realm of the spirit you will never have it physically and that happens in the place of prayer philippians chapter 4 and verse 6 a platform to table our requests and our petitions the bible says be careful king james says careful but it's not an accurate translation the real translation there the root word there is anxiety be anxious he says for nothing right it says but in everything so there is nothing there is no aspect of your life but prayer cannot be involved in it says be anxious for nothing but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving here's the instruction let your request be made known don't assume god knows it he says make your request known king james says make your request known and how do you know god has answered that prayer verse 7 hallelujah and the peace of god if you have truly made your request known you can know that your request has reached heaven because suddenly the peace of god in a way that surpasses all understanding will keep the word keep there is garrison it will build a defense around your heart so that all the troubles that come and make your faith to vacillate the peace of god like a strong wall hallelujah where's dave you sing that your song again just prepare very beautiful powerful song praise the name of the lord as we prepare to wrap up final scripture for tonight james 4 from verse 2 and 3 james 4 the bible says in fact let's start from verse 1 to 3 james 4 it says from whence cometh wars and fighting oh dear i wish i had time to walk this apostle james is a very intelligent apostle he's tracing the root of many people's problems he's saying from whence comes wars and fighting among you do they not come because of disappointed expectations there are secret desires that you have you want to rise you want to be successful you want to make progress you want your ministry to blossom you want business to move forward and it is human it says that the lost that war in your members verse 2 it says ye lost that means you have even an ungodly desire and affinity and you have not you even go to the extent of killing all desiring to have and you cannot obtain you cause quarrel and fight and war yet you have not 
and the simple reason not knowing that everyone can have a great destiny in Christ are you seeing what James is tracing now James is tracing for us the root of bitterness and hatred among family members maybe respectfully speaking among ministers in our society among politicians he's saying if you know what prayer can do you will never envy anybody because everything you ever see there is a way of getting it to another person's testimony is not why you are suffering this is what James is trying to correct simply because you do not know how to ask look at the side effect of not being equipped with that level of knowledge and then verse 3 it says ye ask and you receive not because you ask and miss are you seeing now so he's not talking about prayerlessness he's talking about inaccuracy in understanding how to ask and receive that he may consume it upon your lusts petitions can be made listen God did not leave us in this kingdom defenseless this our world is a wicked world and if God were to leave us to ourselves defenseless we may not be able to rise only God knows the kind of attacks per day per season that come upon families that come upon men of God some of you are politicians if God opens your eyes to see the number of people who try to invoke spirits day and night that you go down there are families just because God is helping you you do not know how many people is fallacy to believe that everyone is clapping for you and yet the Bible says cheer up find comfort you can still excel in this world because you are not alone heaven has a way of coming into partnership with you to make you invincible and to make your life a sign and a wonder that when all the stakes are down you are still standing in that family and they say by what means your grandfather could not stand and you tell them i learned that prayer is partnership with heaven i can draw strength i do not have i can draw wisdom i do not have let me wrap up tonight by teaching you something the highest proof of humility is prayer prayerlessness is not just sin it is pride when you do not pray it is proof that you are sufficient in yourself it, you, prayerlessness is a statement you are making to God that I have vetted you oh God and I have not found anything in you that I do not have I don't need you when we pray it is proof of humility it is an acknowledgement that we are limited in ourselves and we call for support and we call for help even the military when they go for war they have a system of asking for reinforcement when it looks like the battle is raging then they have a way of calling and the command releases more soldiers I have stood face to face with situations in my life that I knew that only prayer could come in. Many of you have stood face to face with situations, legal situations, political situations, health situations. When you stand before life's challenges and situations, sometimes you may need to drop your internet. Sometimes you may need to drop studies and call with all humility even Jesus at the height of his pain at the cross he did not keep quiet Eloi Eloi Lamak Sabatani father if you now turn your face from me then I know that I'm truly defenseless and the father turned it away because he was looking at man the Lord is nigh them that call upon him listen to me you can use the instrument of prayer to bring God down to your life and he stands by you like a mighty terrible one you may be weak right now seated here listen to me some of you are in ministry and you are asking apostle where will I get church land where will I even get the money for it some of you are fathers already plunging into depression because the pandemic brought so much debt you are in a situation when you go to pray you just sit down and cry i bring you words of comfort god is not evil to leave you alone it is our pride that keeps driving the help of god away from us 
my bible says i will lift up my eyes onto the hills then he asked a question he said from whence cometh my help i don't know about you but my help my assistance ah i may look weak oh warm jacob as weak as you are as defenseless as you are but let the jealousy of god be introduced to your life and you will watch your life rise in a way that will first surprise you the recipient of that kindness the hymn writer says how did he put it now he says oh what needless pain we bear he says all because we could not carry everything do you know i thank god for the honor and the privilege that he's given me to work in miracle signs and wonders and sometimes when i have the opportunity to minister to people i am almost tempted to ask them why did you allow it to get this long did you not know that god is that mighty did you not know that god is able to lift why did you allow the issue of your house rent to go so bad why did you allow your health to deteriorate why didn't you run to god the prodigal son kept being proud no i won't go to my father i don't want shame and the more he stayed there doing bold face the more he kept going down until he became like one of the pigs but one day he came to himself he said how many hired servants that's the voice of humility you know many times we want to take credit for everything in our lives joshua selman is a doer and god says in this kingdom owners are rebels if you can step back and say lord you made me father over this family but the bills are killing me i step back and i allow abba to take his place this political office i am tired of the persecutions that come here and if i leave it to myself one day they will kill me for nothing someone can give you a cup of tea that is full of poison and I know you would think you avoid it, but you, your memory can fail you. One day hunger and test will make you finish drinking it first. But you can still find comfort. It is not only when you avoid evil that you are free. There are times that the fire has no power over you. The three Hebrew boys, men who the fire had no power. It is not only avoidance that brings victory. There are times you can walk through the fire isaiah 43 and verse 1 and 2 fear not he says i am with you i have redeemed you i have called you by name you are mine and then he says verse 2 when thou passest through water i will be with you and through the rivers they shall not overflow you he says when thou walkest through fire you shall not be burnt neither shall the flame kindle upon you business people hear me I know that many of you here are veterans of business. I don't mean to insult your pedigree, but you have done so much just with human connection. Why don't you resort with humility to invite divine assistance? That in addition to this, some of you are professionals in your place of work. Why don't you employ the hand of God? I am very quick to step back and say, Lord, if you leave me to myself, how many things do I know? Don't leave me at the mercy of my ignorance. I am learning slowly, but the demands are faster than my rate of learning. Can you come and stand by me as a mighty, terrible God? Bow your heads in prayer in one minute. Everyone, we are praying. We just have five minutes and we are done for tonight's service. Please be patient, don't be distracted everyone all the overflows outside following online while speaking the holy ghost is speaking to you and telling you you need to lay aside that burden you are carrying loads jesus said my my yoke is easy this family burden will kill you for nothing sir this political burden may frustrate you to a point that it may injure you the demands on your business you are probably owing millions and billions in corporate debt it will take more than just finding solutions 
by the arm of flesh some of you are dealing with loved ones with terminal diseases some of you are in ministry you have exhausted all you know as far as church growth is concerned we were not left defenseless everyone talk to the Lord your maker the Bible says to come boldly before him it's time for us to walk in victory And you're not just praying this for yourself alone you are praying for others too because through you like David Dam sang that God can flow through you to bless others everyone please pray we have just two minutes and we're done Ooh, Jesus. are you praying quickly Whatever you want to do, Lord, you can do through me. Someone is praying. Whatever you oh, I am well able. I am well able. I am not the weak believer Lord, under situations and circumstances. He stands by me as a mighty, Whatever terrible one. To change. You can change things through prayer. That family should not remain like that. That financial situation does not have to remain like that. Man of God, your strength is limited. You can outsource intelligence. You can outsource power from a dimension that is not human. Business people. Lord, you can change through me. Pray, pray. Let the song inspire you while you pray. The power of prayer. Thy kingdom come. Visitations for my family. New levels in the spirit. Whoever you want to touch, hey. Lord, you can touch through me. Whatever you want to bring, Lord, you can bring through me. Whatever you want to build Lord you can build through me whoever you want to lift Lord you can lift through me whoever you want to bless Lord you can bless through Whoever you want to heal, Lord, you can heal through me. Whoever you want to change, Lord, you can change. Prayer can change your husband, madam. I assure you, prayer can change your wife. Prayer can change your children. You may have taken them to rehab. Why don't you try the power of prayer? Call upon the God of heaven who is able to change. We have one more minute. Someone talk to God about your job. Someone talk to God about your position. Talk to God about that which stops you from sleeping. The keeper of Israel, the Bible says, he does not sleep nor slumber. Listen, please look at me. 
we're out of time we have to end for tonight but as always we are committed to the global harvest there are people that the Lord brought here tonight many who are following from the US UK Asia the Caribbeans whilst under the influence of this word the Spirit of the Lord is speaking to you many of you you are here seated the balconies all of the overflows right down to the basement outside and the Holy Spirit is speaking to you that it's time to make it right with Jesus such an honor to be used by him to save as we sing I'd like you to leave your seat very quickly there are others who are saying apostle standing here I'm hearing the word of the Lord it's time for me to be a serious Christian I'm tired of playing games with my destiny as I leave this song singing I want you to run and come stand here all of you who are at the overflows just you would just run to your projector screens and stand there those online you would connect by faith and pray the prayer whoever you want to save lord you can save through me keep coming whoever you want to change lord you can change Whoever you want to live, Lord, you can live through me. Whoever you want to bless, Lord, you can bless through me. I'm counting five. Run to Jesus. Don't sit back thinking, Apostle, I want to come, but I'm embarrassed. I want to come but I'm not sure I came with my family members how do I come uh, I'm, I'm shy no this is not a funeral service the greatest gift that you can be given is the gift of Jesus this is not religion this is not church this is an experience to start a journey with God that gives you peace with God that your children and your children's children will benefit from don't be so selfish that you sit back and allow those connected to you to suffer because you have refused to give up on your pride are you coming keep coming whoever you want to change lord you can change through me whoever you want to live lord you can Some of you are crying. Don't be ashamed of your tears. Listen to me. The call to Jesus is not some altar call for weak people to come and stand. It takes a lot of courage. That you are standing here is proof that you are strong. That you are standing here is proof that you are selfless. Because salvation is not just for you alone. Come to Jesus. Our time is gone, but come to Jesus. We are not playing religion here. Jesus is a big deal for your life after now and the excelling of your destiny here and now God bless you God bless you now look at me all of you who are standing here I salute you thank you so much for the courage some of you are crying I salute you for the courage to stand the Bible says whoever will come to him he will in no wise cast away everybody who means business with God will must at a point in his life answer this call refusing this call is pride don't run away from an opportunity to come to Jesus who else can help you I'm going to lead you to pray this prayer number of you are rededicating your lives some of you are making this decision for the first time it doesn't matter what category i'd like you to lift your right hand in surrender and total submission to jesus who is here in our midst more than joshua selman beyond him the christ of god is here and i'd like you to say after me say it sincerely acknowledging that jesus is here
say Lord Jesus one more time say Lord Jesus I love you with all my heart those following online join the prayer tonight I have heard your word I declare that I am unable to help myself so I come to you the author and the finisher of my faith I receive forgiveness of sin I receive eternal life into my spirit I also receive the abundance of grace the gift of righteousness I declare that from today the power of sin the power of Satan the power of the grave is broken over my life I begin a new journey with the Lord Jesus Christ no condemnation no voice speaks against me I am a new person from today I go forward ever and backward never amen keep your hands lifted Jesus as always we present to you the ones you died for thank you for giving them the boldness and the courage by the Spirit to publicly make this decision by the authority of Scripture I declare your sins forgiven and I declare that you start a new journey with God I commend you all to the ministry of the word and the ministry of the spirit and I pray that step after step he will build you to be signs and wonders in the name of Jesus Christ everything that stands against your liberty in Christ I come against it right now I declare that you walk free of every guilt and every condemnation the peace of God that surpasses all understanding let it garrison your mind in the name of Jesus Christ amen and amen now look at me my dear brothers and sisters thank you for making this great decision there's someone waving the placard there one of the counselors please all of you just follow them just a few minutes they'll have your details pray with you and you'll be back to your seat please let's celebrate them everyone don't be tired let's celebrate them hallelujah praise the name of the Lord now just two things very quickly I apologize we have to um, we have to wrap up but let me have the honor and the privilege of acknowledging the head of service of the Federation and her family please let's honor them madam thank you can you just wave your hands to us ma thank you thank you so 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 much it's an honor thank you we never take it for granted and then quite a surprise my brother uh, I was preaching in the heat of the sermon. I just spotted him, a consultant gynecologist, all the way from Meduguri, Dr. Joseph Innocent. Thank you, sir. God bless you. Thank you. Thank you. Please be seated, sir. Thank you. Such an honor. And for every one of you, I love and honor you. We sincerely celebrate you in the name of Jesus Christ. Praise the name of the Lord. Now, the last Sunday of this month, um, that would be our first miracle service here in Abuja. For, for those of you who have not tasted of what the miracle service looks like, you are welcome to experience something that you will not recover from in a lifetime. Please, when we invite people, it's not to increase the church of a man of God. It is proof of love that we know that there are people in need of the power, the glory, and the grace of God and by the grace of God Pastor Nathaniel Bassi will be with us and it will be a wonderful time in the spirit praise the Lord there are other guest artists coming up before him but just to let you know that God is doing a great thing please do not come to church alone pay the price to come with as many and for your loved ones who listen please for your loved ones who are not domiciled in Abuja here and may not make it physically I'd like you to do well to inform them they can connect the online the media space has given us an opportunity there's no excuse as far as connecting to grow and to be built is concerned have you been blessed tonight the Lord bless you please rise up on your feet hallelujah praise the name of the Lord I declare over your life this week beginning is a week of victory for you in the mighty name of Jesus 
may your spiritual life receive such an acceleration this week your hunger and your passion for the things of the spirit will never go down and because you have believed i pray for you all through this week from monday till sunday experience the miraculous every day in the name of jesus christ every source of pain every source of stress i declare that it rolls out of your life like smoke before the wind in the name of jesus christ you will not have to tell people you came for koinonia the mark of grace upon your life and the testament of the hand of god will be evidence that you met with the king may the lord bless you may the lord increase you in the name of jesus christ god bless you and see you next sunday Hello, scriptures exhort us from the book of Proverbs. It says, my son, attend to my sins, incline thy ears to my words. Let them not depart from thy eyes and keep them in the midst of thee. As you have listened to this message, we believe that you are going to reap the blessings thereof if you attend to these words as well that you will keep these words in the midst of your heart that no matter the circumstance your eyes are going to be fixed on these words and as you have been blessed we will tell you to share this message be an evangelist by sharing to others to be blessed and then subscribe to this channel for us because we have loads of videos we have loads of content that is going to make you blessed that is going to set you on course that is going to set you ablaze and don't forget to like for us. Thank you.